Once an Auburn assistant, Will Muschamp makes his first trip to the Plains tonight as head coach. It's been a tough two weeks for his Florida team, beaten and bruised by the nation's top two teams. That leaves a freshman in charge again on the road. And Chris Rainey will have to carry the load without Jeff Demps tonight. Last year, a single quarterback led Auburn's national championship run. It's taken two quarterbacks to replace the Heisman winner. And another Heisman legend knows it will take all of Michael Dyer's efforts tonight. Novo will set the scene and fly in at Jordan-Hare Stadium for our SEC on ESPN matchup. Florida and Auburn next. battle between the Florida Gators and the number 24 Auburn Tigers. As you take a look at the standings in the SEC coming into tonight's game South Carolina survived a scare a victory today over Mississippi State but Georgia is right on their heels the dogs are in action even as we speak Florida still within striking distance because they play both Georgia and South Carolina in upcoming weeks in the West LSU and Alabama one and two on a collision course for November 5th but Auburn still very much in the hunt with a 2 and one record, and they definitely need a victory tonight. Welcome, everybody. Brad Nessler along with Todd Blackledge. Sold-out crowd tonight to watch Auburn in Florida. And, Todd, I think if we had to come up for a, a nifty nickname for tonight's game, it would be Crossroads Saturday night for these two teams. Well, they're very similar teams, identical records. They both are young. They both are a little fragile psychologically right now. But if you look at who these two teams have left on their schedule, tonight is the defining game because the outcome tonight, I believe, will set the tone for the second half of the season for both of these teams. We talked about the similarities. They are both four and two, and they both have quarterback issues. We might see as many as four guys play in that spot tonight. Yeah, and the crazy thing is, three of those four guys were playing high school football at this time last year. And because of that, both teams have struggled throwing the football. I think tonight, the key to the game, which pair of quarterbacks Backs, makes more plays in the passing game and doesn't turn it over to the other team. Well, the Auburn Tigers on their home field where they won so many games in a row. Their fans excited and the Tigers take the field. have won 10 consecutive conference games. Can they make the Florida Gators their next victim? We will find out tonight in Auburn. The once healthy trees at Tumor Corner look like this now. Thanks to the poisoning by a misguided Alabama fan. That was all precipitated by first an Iron Bowl victory, an SEC championship, and then a national title for the undefeated Auburn Tigers last year. And of course, Cam Newton on his way to the Heisman Trophy. Been a strange couple of years around here because of Cam Newton. If you look at the timeline, first the recruiting visit to Mississippi State and then to Auburn, and then notified Auburn was of improper recruitment involving his father. Well, the NCAA absolved Auburn of any major violations in relation to the paper play scheme that Cam Newton's father tried to work at Mississippi State. Even though the NCAA never formally charged Auburn with any wrongdoing, it did find Cam's amateur status was violated by the scheme, but it reinstated him to play. And the NCAA this week absolving Auburn of any future problems. And Gene Chizik talked with us about the ruling by the NCAA this week. We're excited that the NCAA made the statement. There's no question about it. I think it removes a lot of area for rumors and you know, insinuations. Uh, but really and truly, you know, we feel great about how we run the program. I've said that over and over and over again. Uh, we feel great about the direction of the program. So literally, we moved on a long time ago, and, and we're really focused on winning in football games. And we're going to focus now on the football <laughs> game. We're going to move on. And Cam Newton's probably watching tonight. He's a Carolina Panther now. And Auburn's not undefeated anymore, as they were a year ago. But they do have 
a very big game at hand right now because these two teams both at four and two and wanting to stay in the hunt in the SEC. Now, I, I just expect that we are going to have a real fight here for 60 minutes because both teams are in the exact same situation. They've got to recover what's been lost already and set the tone for the second half of the season. Auburn won the toss and deferred, so that means Cody Parkey will be kicking away to Andre DeBose and Mike Gillisley. Again, Jeff Dimps will not play tonight, and that's another problem for Florida because he's their speedster along with Chris Rainey. And there's Jeff on the sideline with no pads. So a heavy burden on Chris Rainey tonight without Jeff in the lineup. We're underway in the planes. Kick will go right to the goal line to DeVos. Across the 20 and drags some tacklers out across the 30 yard line. So a pretty good return as we check in. Third member of our team is Holly Rowe. Holly. Well guys, as you can see, Jeff Depp's on the sideline, not even suited up. I didn't see him come out at all for warm up, so he's out for this game. That puts some added pressure on Chris Rainey, who's not only their leading re re uh, rusher, but their leading receiver. Charlie Weiss told us it really hurts because they love to have the two speedy guys on the field together to make it tough on defenses. So look for Mike Gillisley as a backup to Rainey and even wide receiver Trey Burton, number eight. Not just a Wildcat quarterback, but also some running back time tonight. There's Rainey in the backfield behind Brissett. The freshman's going to toss it to him. And he cuts back inside and got about four. Let's check. Our impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A and the guy that Holly just talked about, Mr. Do Everything, Chris Rainey. Trey Burton, talk about a guy that's versatile. He'll play about four positions tonight. And defensively, Matt Elam, one of the leading tacklers. He's got two interceptions on the season. Okay, I think the guy that's got to come up big for four tonight is their tight end, Jordan Reed, number 11. He's in the slot at the bottom of the screen. Reset pump fakes to the right. Plenty of time, and he's going to air it long. Man out there, that's covered beautifully, and it's intercepted. T Bell. Well, the bad news for Florida is that's way too late to throw the ball deep down the middle of the field by Brissett. The good news is it's just like a good punt because <laughs> Auburn has the ball on the 10 yard line. So you, you don't want your quarterback to lose his confidence with a play like that, but it's not a horrible situation. He just waited too long to throw the ball down the field. When you want to throw deep, you have to get the ball in the air early. High school, you can get away with it. College, you can't. So now Auburn with the turnover at its own 10 yard line. Charlie Weiss sitting with his freshman quarterback. Meanwhile, Bear Trotter in the shotgun for Auburn on their first offensive snap. And it's Dyer straight up the middle. And Dyer goes for about 13 on the opening run of the night. I think you're going to see Auburn try to go tempo early in this game, try to get a little fatigue on the defensive front. They have a lot of respect for the front seven of this Florida defense, but they've not seen a tempo offense yet this year. And Auburn wants to try to get that going early. At the 33-yard line, Dyer now will rejoin Trotter in the gun, gets the call, trying to sweep the right side, and Florida will have none of that. Jelani Jenkins, the outside linebacker, on the stop. Michael Dyer's had three straight games of over 100 yards on the ground, and he has carried a lot of it, 62 carries in the last two outings. Well, I really think he's got to be a big part of their formula tonight to have a chance to win. I think he's got to touch it at least 30 times. I think. Ontario McCaleb's got to touch it at least 20 times, and the freshman quarterback, Frazier, has got to run it at least 10 times. I'm going to keep you to those numbers. All right, that's 50. <laughs> there's what you don't, there's 60. the number we don't need to see is flags, <laughs> oh right? Oh, boy. Yeah. Hubert Owens, our referee. False start. Offense. Number 75. Penalty is five yards from the previous spot. Second down. Randy Mosley, the right tackle. Well, Florida will be without a defensive end tonight, guys. Ronald Powell did not make the trip. He's out with an injury. So look for an undersized Sam linebacker, Laurenti McCray, to play that buck position. Also, we could see some William Green. But as you said, Todd, Auburn's going to try to wear down that defensive front. It really hurts that they're without one of their best run stoppers tonight. Auburn goes with a mini huddle. 
And on the end around is McCaleb. And Terry McCaleb gets drilled out of bounds, but he did get five yards as we take a look at our Auburn impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. And pretty much right on cue, there's a guy that's got to handle it a lot tonight. Todd just mentioned it. Ontario. McCaleb, when Darius Carr, they need somebody as a wide receiver to come through with the injuries to their top two guys. He might be the man. And Lemonier had a good game last week. Four sacks on the season for Corey. For third down and 13 coming up. And see, this is what we saw last week. The penalty that sets him back, it puts him in difficult situations for Barrett Trotter, third and long. And they're going to play it safe. McCaleb. Trying to weave his way through. He won't get the first down, but he gets a decent gain of seven, and that'll force the punt. Gus Malzahn told me before the game on the field, he said, we're, we're going to try to win ugly. I mean, you know, <laughs> they've got to do what they can do, and that is run the ball with Dyer a lot, try to stay ahead of the chains. They've got to be good on first down. They've got to have third and manageable situations for Trotter, and they can't have penalties that set them back. Gene Chizik says, and we got to play field position to have any chance, and that's why their punter comes in handy for him. He had one bad punt last week against Arkansas, but other than that, he's been brilliant on the season. As you look behind Stephen Clark, Chris Rainey waiting on the other end. High kick. Rainey back pedals. He's going to have to take a fair catch. And lost the ball. Let's see who's got it. Saunders gets down there. Yeah, the problem was that Rainey was going to make a fair catch, but his own guys were backing up too close to him. And they got in his way and distracted him from making a clean catch. They got to get out of his way. Luckily, a teammate covered the ball. Offensive coordinator Charlie Weiss on the Florida sideline and through the first four games of the season things were going swimmingly Todd. Yep. Well, you know, a couple things. They lost their senior quarterback John Brantley and they played the probably the best two of the best defenses in the country back to back in Alabama and LSU. So excuse the numbers a little bit. Right. Rainey on a draw play. And Rainey nice open field tackle by Chris Davis, the corner, and a pickup of only two. You know, here's what happened to the Florida offense as we take a look at Rainey on this play. They were playing pretty good early against weaker opponents. Right. And then they go against Alabama, and in watching that game on tape, they were playing okay. And John Brantley in the first half was on the, part, on the mark throwing the football. Then he got hurt, and Charlie even said he didn't have a great plan ready for the true freshman guys to come in. And it's taken them a couple weeks to get comfortable with that. Here is the freshman quarterback on second down and eights. Off play action to throw. Scrambles and whistles, which we didn't hear at the beginning. Flags down. Before the snap, false start. Offense, number 11. That penalty is five yards from the previous spot. Second down. Boy, well, has had way too many penalties the last couple of weeks, too. And that might mean Jordan Reed was the intended receiver, Tom. Yeah, well, he was anxious, a <laughs> little over-anxious. 11 catches coming into the ball game. He's a matchup problem. That's why I think they've got to find him early in the game, because he's a big, rangy guy. Former quarterback, now tight end. There he is. On the wing and in motion on second down at 13. Here's a toss sweep. Rainey with a blocker in front, but not enough of a block, that's for sure. Corey Lemonier with the stop and a loss of three. Well, in two times, we've seen Chris Rainey lose the handle on the football. One on a punt return, and on this one, at the end of the play, he's going to lose control of the football. Auburn does a nice job of maintaining the edge of their defense and stringing it out. But Chris Randy better take care of that football. Because you can't, neither one of these teams can overcome multiple turnovers in a game like this. Gators are going the wrong way. Third down and 17, and the crowd lets them hear about it. Frankie Hammond in motion. Reset. Fires near side complete, but short of the first down. It'll be about three yards shy. Short, they'll have to punt, but that's a good confidence play for the freshman quarterback, Brissett, because uh, he sat back there, he planted his foot, he threw it with confidence. 
And that's a tough throw, throwing that deep out. So he showed some poise and he showed the strength of arm that they're going to need later on this game. Even last week in the lost LSU, I think poise is a word you yeah. brought up several times watching him in that game. Well, you know, the, the kid thought he was going to redshirt early in the week. He found out Wednesday, not only is he not going to redshirt, he's going to start on the road against LSU. In Death Valley, yeah. Kyle Christie on the punt. Juan Bray, the freshman on the return, broke a tackle and got about 10 out of the return. 8-21 remaining first quarter. No score here early between the Gators and the Tigers. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love having you here. And in part by Buick. See real stories of human achievement on the Buick Human Highlight Reel at NCAA.com slash Buick. Gene Chizik and Tiger Walk, and trust me, unless you have police officers, you don't walk through that crowd. It's impossible. All right, right now, as we talk about Gene Chizik, talking about field position, a key to the game, Auburn gained about 21 yards on that last change of possession with Florida going backwards and having to kick it. Kyle Frazier in, the freshman quarterback, known more as a runner than a thrower. McCaleb's there with him, and he'll get the call. And Tara McCaleb, and he's got a first down run. Pick up a 13. Well, the one thing that Auburn has been able to do consistently so far in the first half of the season is run the football. As you see him line up to go tempo. Last two games, they've run it well, but the penalties have hurt them, and they cannot overcome the turnover. Now Trotter back in and Dyer as well. And Dyer goes straight up the middle. And number five gets five before Jonathan Boston made the tackle. Dyer's the guy that's going to run in between the tackles. McCaleb, they want to get on the perimeter. And then when Frazier's in, as we see him coming back in on this play, he can run with power also. They can run all the runs they run with Dyer with him at the quarterback, and they gain an extra blocker by doing that. Six runs, no passes so far for the Tigers. Frazier back in. Dyer behind him gets the call, and Dyer's got another first down. And now they can continue to stay, as Todd said, ahead of the sticks, move the chains, go quick tempo if they choose, and they bring Trotter right back out. So it's quarterback every other down right now. Tempo with changing quarterbacks, that's not easy to do. First down inside the 45 of Florida. And then Dyer again, this time the Gators stop him after a short game. Picked up two. Omar Hunter. Part of the tackle along with Floyd. Not surprising that Auburn is coming out running the football. Number one, that's what they've been doing the best. And number two, the last two weeks, that's where Florida has really been challenged. Now, Alabama and LSU both ran well against them. Different kind of schemes. More of a power offensive line, more of a zone scheme. Trotter fakes the end around, loads it, and goes deep. Overshot everybody. And it was Quindarius Carr, his intended receiver. Tell you what, Barrett Trotter again, when you throw deep, it's not good to throw late. I think he had the crossing route on this. If he would have just checked it down to his next read, he might have gotten a big play on the crossing route. He was going for the home run for the touchdown and missed the crossing route. They could have got him a big first down. So that's third down and long. McCaleb with Trotter in the gun. And it's Carr in motion. Looks to his right and now scrambles for time. Trotter finally throws and it's out of bounds and complete. Intended for Jay Wisner. Bounds is incomplete. Fourth down. One of the things that Florida will challenge this Auburn team with, especially without Emory Blake, is they, they play more man coverage in their secondary than anybody Auburn's face. And, and with Blake on the sidelines or probably unable to go, they're going to really challenge them. They're going to get up in their face. They're going to disrupt the timing. And they're going to force Barrett Trotter to make tough throws against man coverage. If you want a guy to knock one inside the 10, here's your guy. Yeah. Stephen Clark's done it 11 times in the last two games. The last two games. And leads the SEC in that capacity. It's this one a mile in the air. And the fair catch taken for and again. A little bit of drama from Chris Rainey at the 14 yard line. Florida offense goes back to work with 6.22 left in the quarter when we come back. 
You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Brad Nessler, Tom Blackledge, Holly Rowe, Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn. Tigers defense out there against Florida at the 14 yard line. I think Florida needs to throw on first down for this young quarterback. Play action stuff. Rainey. And they drag it out, and he's dropped for a loss of a yard. Jake Holland, the middle linebacker, made the stop for Ted Roof's defense. Well, this Auburn defense under the direction of Ted Roof, the numbers are not very good. I mean, uh, I think they have made some improvement. They've played a lot of young guys. They've tried to simplify some things, but they've also played some pretty good offenses. I mean, Clemson is a, in a great offense. You know? yep. uh, they did well against South Carolina, and last week Arkansas, maybe the most potent offense in this SEC as well. Second down and 11. Rainey again trying to get to the second level. They're not going to let him get there as Kenneth Carter came over from his defensive line spot to make the stop. It's it's a lot easier to be a great defensive coordinator when you got Nick Fairley and some yeah. of those guys they had last year. That helps. That helps. When you can pressure the quarterback with four guys, you can be more creative in the back end of your defense. They don't have that right now. They're looking for a stop here on third down and four. Last two weeks, Florida has been six for their last 25 on third down. Uh, young quarterback, good defenses. This is a manageable down and distance, though. Four yards. Auburn shifting on their front. They come with a blitz. The set fires high. And the blitz may have gotten to him a little bit. DuBose was the intended receiver, and Holland made two big plays in that series. Yeah, Holland timed up the blitz perfectly. I mean, he's watching the center. He's watching for the movement. And Holland's right here in the middle. Watch him time this blitz and get right up into the chest of Brissett. And Brissett's not able to step through that throw and get it down on the slam. The ball sails on him because the pressure was so quick by Holland. And a perfect hit as he got him right in the chest with a shoulder. Didn't go to his head. Forcing the kick. Second straight three and out for the Gators. Christie to punt. Movement. They're going to go back five more. The gunner here on the bottom was too early and taken off. I think that was Purifoy. Before the snap, false start. Offense, number 15, five yards from the previous spot. Fourth down. Well, they back it up further, and now Christie's going to be punting near his own goal line. Yep, there's the early movement, trying to get a jump. And, and we talked about Auburn playing field position. They they stand to have excellent field position here at the exchange of this punt. High snap. Christie gets it away. Quan Gray is going to have to backpedal. Christie got all of this, baby. Never mind. Wow. <laughs> Never mind is right. All the way back near the 17-yard line. Nice kick, number 44. 450 remaining first quarter scoreless here. Let's see what else is going on. We check in with Reese Davis. Maryland's up on Clemson. Couple of undefeateds are defeated now from the Big Ten today as Michigan and Illinois both bit the dust in Big Ten play. Now Frazier in a quarterback to start the series here. And he's going to keep it on his own replay and picks up three. And to bring up second down and seven. So the field position was going to work until Christie hit a 67 yard punt. That'll mess it up for you. Got it. One of the things Auburn likes to do is they like to they run zone read they run counter plays and they also run the speed sweep and they read that as well so the quarterback can either give it to McCaleb on the sweep or keep it and run inside which he did that time fake it to McCaleb no they give it to McCaleb but he's dragged down almost a horse collar tackle there but no penalty and another loss nice play by McCray the outside linebacker negative play created by the Florida defense and you know under Will Muschamp and coordinator Dan Quinn they're going to be aggressive they're going to try to attack the line of scrimmage and it sets Auburn back behind the chain third and ten not a good situation for this Auburn offense As Dan Quinn the defensive coordinator yelling instructions from the sideline is Auburn going in the wrong direction as well third down at ten for Trot waiting and maybe waited too long as he's hit as he throws by Sharif Floyd and the fans are just a little bit restless right now. They're not really booing, but they're not exactly cheering the Auburn offense. Trotter's 0 for 3 throwing the football. 
Well, again, the problem is what they needed on third down. They're trying to max protect. You see, they keep Michaela in. They want extra blockers, so they're releasing fewer receivers. And the problem is they don't have a go-to guy. Emery Blake is on the sideline. He's their best guy. And Barrett Trotter know where to go with the football in that one. Clark in to kick. Rainey's back deep. Rainey with a couple of career punt returns for touchdowns. And again, high punt and dropped by Rainey. Scooped up by Auburn. No. They got a spot. You can't pick it up on the muff. It could be Auburn's football. I thought they did not give him enough room to catch the football. There was no flag for a halo infraction. I thought they got too close to Rainey as he was trying to make the fair catch. And I think that's what Mil Will Muschamp is complaining about as well. Was the fair catch called for late, too? That's another question. And the officials have given no direction on whose ball it is. We just know it's spotted at the 32. So Hubert Owens is going to straighten it out, hopefully, for us right here. During the play, the kicking team recovered the, the scrimmage kick. By rule, they cannot advance it. It is first down to Auburn. Auburn's got the ball. Now, I, I agree that it's Auburn's ball, but I don't think they gave Rainey enough room to catch the football. And Ontario, I think that's what Will Muschamp is yeah, saying right now. Ontario McCaleb was the first guy down there. It was a late signal on the fair catch, but McCaleb has to give him room. And he almost bumped into Rainey as he was trying to catch the football and certainly distracted him. I think you're right, and I think Will Muschamp has a gripe right there. That's a huge play. And it gives Auburn an opportunity at the Florida 32-yard line. And Will is still letting them know. And did he take a timeout? Muschamp took a timeout. Gives Will a chance to vent a little bit and to settle his defense down. Again, th this is a team that has gotten beat back-to-back -back weeks against two great teams. They're very fragile right now. And he even said, I've got to be careful how to manage the adversity that our team's facing. And right now, he's going to try to give them a chance to settle into this sudden change situation and come up with a stop. You see how Will calmed down just for a second and then fired up yeah. again? <laughs> see, this is not a reviewable play, so there's no point calling a timeout to get it reviewed because they can't review the play. I think it was a mistake. But the, the reality is it's Auburn's football in Florida territory, and the Florida defense has to respond. You can see Rainey's reaction looking at the officials as if to say how much they got to give me some room to at least get my hands on the ball, which is barely what he did. And the head coach of the Gators, for those of you that are lip readers, uh, <laughs> enjoy the rest of the night because Will's not done yet. <laughs> well, he earned the nickname Coach Boom, Boom when yeah. he was here as a defensive coordinator earlier in his career. I did hear the umpire say to him, if you'll calm down, I'll tell you about it. Will Chant Muschamp was unable to calm down. They didn't give him a great explanation, but they were explaining to, to the special teams coach that he has to be given an opportunity to catch the ball. They felt he was given the opportunity. That's what I heard the umpires telling him. The end of the night could be a huge play in this football game, but we got a long way to go here in the first quarter. Trotter gives it off to Michael Dyer. Dyer just bulldozes his way for about seven yards before Omar Hunter finally pulls down number five. Dyer is not quite as big as the two backs that Florida has faced most recently. Trent Richardson ran for 189 yards against him from Alabama. Spencer Ware for LSU, not as many yards, but a big, powerful guy. But Michael Dyer is built low to the ground. Very hard guy to tackle. Runs with a real low center of gravity. And he's going to take it in the Wildcat right here on second down and three. And he'll just keep it after faking the handoff to McKayla. But it goes down before he hits the line of scrimmage. Nice job by the Gators defense. Yep. Big early play right here in this ball game for the Florida defense. Sudden change. They forced a third down situation. They forced the ball back into Barrett Trotter's hands and potentially out of Michael Dyer's hands. And if they get a stop here on third down and force 
a field goal attempt or maybe keep them from any points. Will Muschamp can calm down a little bit on the sideline. I would throw the ball to Ontario McCaleb here. Try to get him the ball quickly in space and see if he can make one guy miss for a first down. Whoops, might not have to. Florida, did they jump? Might be a free play. And a jump ball in the end zone. Touchdown. D'Angelo Benton in the corner of the end zone. Marker on the play, so we have to wait and see. If Florida jumped off sides, it's an Auburn touchdown. Offside. Yep. Dominique Easley. Dominique Easley, number two, jumped off sides. And credit Barrett Trotter for not giving up on the play. And how about it for D'Angelo Benton, the guy who had a couple critical drops last week at Arkansas, stays with the play, as well as Barrett Trotter, and they get the touchdown. So just three plays to go the 32 yards. Cody Parkey in for the point after. And it's 7 0 Auburn. And as we said, a critical call on what Todd thought should have been Florida football instead. Auburn touchdown. Well, Dominic Easley is going to jump. The whole line's going to stay there, but Barrett Trotter doesn't quit on the play. Lutzen Kirkin blocks for him. Benton stays with it, goes up in the air, and Auburn has the lead. D'Angelo Benton, a happy guy. 25 yard touchdown catch has given Auburn the lead. Will Muschamp, former assistant here. Gene Chizik, first an assistant, then at Texas. Very similar pass, actually, because they both ended up as defensive coordinators at Texas. Will as a head coach in waiting to Mac Brown before the Florida opening. Gene Chizik, defensive coordinator at Texas before going to Iowa State, and then here, and has already won a national championship. They never crossed paths here, but they were close. One 40 years old and one just about to turn 50. And two very good ones. And boom, as Todd called them. And then Gene Chizik, whose uh, expression doesn't change all that much from one play to the other. Uh, you'll never say that about Will Muschamp. <laughs> Parkey to kick. At the two yard line, DeVos. And he spins his way across the 20. And hopefully he isn't hurt, gets up slowly as we go quickly to Reese Davis. All right, Brad, we'll show you what's going on. Clemson and Maryland. Taj Boyd found a wide open Cameron Chisholm. Unfortunately for him, Chisholm's on scholarship at Maryland. Second pick six of the year. He had the one that iced the Miami game. Earlier, I told you Sammy Watkins had muffed a punt to set up a Maryland touchdown. Uh, the freshman was able to atone on the ensuing kickoff. He did not score, but the long return set up an Andre Ellington score, and Clemson's down 14-10 late in the first. Boy, could the two undefeateds from the ACC both be beaten. Georgia Tech beaten by Virginia today. Here's Brissett on the run. He'll keep it and slide his way to the first down. Yeah, good decision by the freshman. Florida needs to get some momentum. they got to get something going offensively. Nice play-action pass on first down, a safe play, a bootleg. And he saw a lot of green grass, made a good decision to run for the first. That's the Gators' first first down. Up until that point, they'd had eight plays for 22 yards. Now they work at the 33-yard line here in the final minute and a half of the first quarter. Auburn thinking about a blitz off the corner. They'll come with it. Here comes the pressure. Throwback screen to Rainey. Incomplete, and he's going to cover it just in case. Darren Bates is the guy that brought the heat. Well, and this was a great call against pressure defense. The problem is Jacoby Brissett, he needs to expect that. He needs to be able to look at that defense and know this is going to happen quick. So he's got to get those eyes around and be ready to get that ball to Rainey a step sooner because it's a great call against a corner blitz or a blitz off the edge. And you're saying, why didn't Rainey block the guy? Well, he was the intended receiver, yeah. so he could only put an arm out there and get out as quickly as he could. Second down to 10. Brissett in the gun. This time they thought about the same play, and now he's just going to have to eat this one. Good job 
by Sigler applying the pressure that time. Well, good job by Sigler and also a great job by Lemonier because I think Lemonier read the screen quickly and just locked on to Rainey. They're trying to throw the screen to Rainey. Watch Lemonier read it and just lock on to him. And that's why Brissett had nowhere to go with the football. Great job by Lemonier, one of our impact guys. Only a sophomore, only 19 years old, but he is already a good one. And he's got the frame after we met with him yesterday. He might be a monster by the time he leaves the planes. He's a future 280 pounder. Yeah. <laughs> Third and 13. Here comes Bates again. Brissett got around him. Throws on the run. And incomplete intended for his tight end. Broken up by Whitehead in the secondary. See, they tried to throw a screen again, I think. And, and Auburn was ready for it. They're rushing the quarterback, but they're rushing under control because they're feeling screen. You see, they're trying to set up Rainey on the screen again. Brissett has to scramble out, and that's good discipline by the Auburn defense on that series. And a good series for Darren Bates, the outside linebacker who came from two different sides on the blitz. Christie's last punt was 67 yards. He blasted this one as well. And way back on the fair catch inside the 20 is Bray. 21 seconds remaining in the quarter after a 53-yard kick. Great day in college football. Includes in the Pac-12 tonight as it's Arizona State and Oregon. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels on ESPN and ESPN3 coming up following us as the Sun Devils looking for their first 4-0 start. And Oregon, we know all about them. 14 straight conference wins, longest in school history. They'll have a lot of fancy uniforms on display tonight. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Auburn looks like without LaMichael James. And if that swings anything towards Arizona State. They got Kenyon Barman and some yeah. other guys that will fill the holes, I'm sure. Brent and Kirk and Aaron will have that one for you when we're done here. And Frazier on the carry. Got a couple. I think both of these teams. Even though Auburn got the touchdown because of the change of field position after the, the muff punt, both these teams are going to be better off throwing on first down than throwing on third down tonight. The end of one at home, courtesy of that one touchdown pass. The Tigers out in front, 7 of it. Let's take a look at our mock BCS standings brought to you by Discover Card. Won't come out until tomorrow night. Brad Edwards is usually right on with this stuff. I'm sure Brad right now is going, don't show that because Georgia Tech already lost today to Virginia, so I'm sure they won't be tent. And Clemson, as Reese told us a couple of minutes ago, trailing Maryland by a couple of touchdowns. And of course, the BCS standings in the BCS National Championship belongs right here at Auburn from a year ago with their perfect season. Right now, they are in front as we start the second quarter. And Trotter on the option to McCaleb. Florida stretches it out nicely, and they drop him for a loss. I tell you, the thing that jumps out to you about this Florida defense when you watch them on tape or you watch them live is they can really run. I mean, they are fast. And you know, when I first put off the film on it, I said, they have four guys in their starting front seven that wear single-digit jersey <laughs> numbers. I've never seen that before. So you know they can run, because you, if you're a slow guy, you don't ask for a single-digit number. You just don't do it. Right. Ronald Powell, one of those guys, is not playing tonight, but he would have been a single-digit number as well. Trotter. And he throws incomplete, and I don't know who the intended receiver was. Darius Carr, maybe. I think that's where he was looking. You know, he had a little trouble getting the ball too high last week against Arkansas. Now, talk about having some trouble. Chris Rainey's had some trouble fielding punts tonight. This was the first one. His own guy, the linebacker Jenkins, ran into him. And then he had to come forward on this one and didn't catch it clean. And then the last one. Even though I'm not so sure McCaleb gave him enough room, it was still a muff punt, and it resulted in an Auburn touchdown. Just three plays after that last one. That's the only score we've got tonight. Kick. Rainey's going to let this one bounce. Try to get everybody out of the way. Florida barely does get some of their folks out of the way. And it's down at the 37-yard line. 44-yard kick. He kicked it about 65 in the air, though. Auburn with the lead. Florida trying to answer offensively when we come back. 
Florida hasn't gone quite that far down the quarterback depth chart. Seven nothing Auburn, but they are at number three. Holly. Well, Jeff Driscoll injured his left ankle last week and was unable to play, but he is on the sideline. He's been cleared to play. And when we spoke with Charlie Weiss yesterday, he said it might not be the first quarter, obviously, now that it's passed, but it could be as much as the fourth quarter. But he's right next to Charlie Weiss. Everything he's calling in, he's checking his wristband. He's very involved in the game plan. And if Brissett continues to struggle like this, guys, don't be surprised to see Driscoll, who was the number one rated quarterback coming out of high school last year. Brissett goes out, and yeah. Trey Burton, Trey Burton is going to play quarterback in this particular snap at least as we mentioned Mr. Versatility plays a lot of different spots and on this one he hands off to Gillisley he got a decent game picked up five McNeil with a tackle Trey Burton a much better runner than he is a thrower when he lines up at quarterback so Auburn's defense has to kind of lock in on option Quarterback runs, quarterback powers, but still be cognizant of the speed of Rainey. Of course, Burton, the guy that had a dream game against Kentucky last year with six touchdowns. Here he is on the option, pitches ahead to Rainey, and he's got the first down, little shovel pass. Yeah. So that one's going to go as a completed pass. And pass you know, eight, when they put Burton in, one, this two, looks three. like the Florida offense from a year ago. It's not much different. Eight, eight, option, shovel pass, quarterback runs. And right now, Charlie Weiss is just trying to manufacture some offense. He said, we got to score some points. They yeah. scored 10 against Alabama, 11 against LSU. That's not good enough to win in the SEC. Charlie says he thought that there was actually progress made between these two, those two games. He said the scores wouldn't be indicative of that. But here's the pitch to Rainey on the corner. Wow. Lemonier tried to get him, and you saw that extra burst of speed. What a great play by Trey Burton. And there's going to be a 15-yard penalty tacked on at the end of it, I think, for roughing the quarterback. This is a corner blitz, and Trey Burton gets rid of the pitch right away in the face of this corner blitz, and I think it's going to be an illegal hit to the head by the cornerback who is blitzing on the play. That was an incredibly effective play by Burton, the awareness to get that pitch out of there before the blitz hit him. Personal foul on the defense, number 27. Contact to the quarterback above the shoulder. 15 yards for the previous spot, automatic first down. Parisi with a penalty. Here's the corner blitz, and Burton's going to feel it and pitch and give. I mean, that's what you got to do. When you know that hit's coming, you got to give give ground and fall back, and the hit was up around the head area. They tack it on to the end of the run, and that's going to take it all the way down inside the 25, actually right at the 25. Nice job by Trey Burton and Chris Rainey. So now Florida threatening here at the 25-yard line of Auburn. Burton stays in there at the controls. And he'll keep it this time. And he's collared after a short game by Whitaker from his defensive tackle spot. Second quarter with 12.35 remaining. Auburn on a 25-yard touchdown pass with the lead. But Florida approaching the red zone right now. Second down and eight. Burton this time will pitch to the trail man Rainey and Auburn knocks him out of bounds. Bates got penetration and then Chris Davis did the rest. Yeah, Bates did a great job of shedding his block because there was a guy assigned to block him and if he cuts Bates' legs out, then Rainey's going to keep running, but Bates get off the block and forces Rainey out of bounds. Brings up third down long. That guy's had a heck of a first half so far. Reset back in at quarterback on a third down and seven. Haven't picked up a third down yet tonight. Make it third down and 12. <laughs> They're making it hard on themselves. Yeah, right tackle Matt Patchen jumped early. False start. Offense. Number 71. Five yards from the previous spot. Second down. Correction. Third down. Florida near the bottom of the SEC. Their third down conversions. 
You know, part of that is playing two freshman quarterbacks. Part of that is playing two great defenses in Alabama and LSU. And part of it is just like here, penalties that set you back at third and 13. Yeah, that's difficult to convert against any kind of defense in this league. You don't have one of your key weapons, Jeff Dempse. It's been all Chris Rainey so far tonight. Reset under center. I think they called a timeout from the sideline. Will Muschamp called a timeout before the snap. Timeout. Florida. And we'll take the timeout as well. Reset can talk it over with Charlie Weiss on the sidelines. Florida trailing by a touchdown. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. And Lexus, <laughs> it's time to engineer amazing. The Tigers. <laughs> or Eagle. Tumors Lemonade. Hadn't had any this trip. Usually I do. Third down and 13 coming up for Florida. They want it there in Maine. Or a blitz. I'm looking to get the ball to Chris Rainey. If they show a cover two, I want to get somebody down the middle of the field and see if we can split the defense. We'll call it third down on a long throw. How's that? Thompson in motion. Reset in trouble. Gonna try to scramble around and see if he can pick up blockers, and instead he got tattooed. And now we got a little extracurricular play after the whistle. I don't see any flags though. Apparently officials are going to let it go. Bates in the middle of everything again. And one of the problems with a young quarterback, it's hard to get them to be patient to read progressions. Lemonier, a great upfield pass rusher, is going to get the first pressure and force Brissett up in the pocket. And you see him tuck that ball right away. As soon as he felt pressure, his second reaction was to tuck the ball and try to run. Caleb Sturgis will try a 47-yard field goal, and it is perfect. Nice kick, and Florida on the board. Looking for seven, they have to settle for three. With 10-28 remaining in the half, Auburn seven and Florida three. And right now, let's take a look at our taste of the town with my partner, brought to you by Expedia. Growing up in the home of George and Mary Taylor, or Panny as she was nicknamed, kids and grandkids learned about love for God, love for family, and a love for Southern home cooking. Now what started as something they would do for neighbors and weekend plate sales became a full-time Auburn restaurant in 2005, and it's called Panny George's Kitchen. Thank you. Oh boy, <laughs> and I can only imagine. So 10.28 remaining. In the first half. Auburn has won 10 straight conference games at home. Of course, with the national championship last year, they didn't lose much to anybody. Florida. That drive, just 33 yards and seven plays, took 341 off the clock. Will Muschamp has calmed down considerably. <laughs> you know, he, he talked about, you know, managing the adversity this team is going through. Two difficult losses, and him being such an emotional, demonstrative guy in his first time being a head coach. I mean, he's learning as he goes as well. He's not going to change either. No. Sturgis, who just hit the field goal with the kickoff. He'll go down with the three yard line. The return out across 25 to 26. Let's check in and see what Todd had to eat yesterday. This truly is a family operation. Miss Panny still comes in on Friday. She's got her daughters here, Lorraine and Mary Ann, and Lorraine's got three daughters working here, Mary, Rewa, and Gerilyn. Now, they say the number one ingredient in all the food is love, right? And I love my job. So you know what? Time to go to work. <laughs> Time to go to work. There's a lot of love there, and there was a lot of food there. Oh, what a great place. And here's Frazier on the keeper and out to the 30-yard line. I got to tell you, not only are you huge around here, and every week there's the headline of the Opelika 
Auburn yeah. newspaper, ESPN. There's Todd and Miss Panty. Miss Panty yep. on the front of the newspaper. Yeah, it just is. It, it's fun. I mean, <laughs> it's a great place. The food was outstanding, right in my wheelhouse at yep. Southern Cooking, and uh, it was so neat because the whole family works in there. You know, and uh, it started as a little family deal on the weekends, and now they got a full-time restaurant. Try to hit in the pocket, and the ball came out. No, it didn't. He did cover it. It was easily with the pressure. By the way, you can follow Todd on Twitter at Taste of Town Todd. How was the catfish? Catfish was outstanding. They had that on Friday. They always have fried chicken. That's their number one item, and, the, and they always have that every day. And then they rotate the other meats and veggies. That's macaroni and cheese. <laughs> good stuff, man. Here's a third down and 12 for Auburn. And they likewise have struggled on third down conversions. Well, they've converted one and it was for a touchdown. Florida trying to bring the heat on Trotter. And it was set up to be a screen pass, but McCaleb never got out there. Somebody leveled him. William Green with a pressure. And Auburn's got a kick. Gus Malzahn talking with his quarterback. You know, it's, it's hard to say is is what's going on in this game the fact that both defenses have really settled into the game or that both passing games and quarterback situations are, are struggling. You know, I think it's a little bit of a combination. I think Florida is very talented on defense, especially up front. Clark to punt. Rainy, it's been whoa, we just got that one away. Again, high tower and pick. Rainy says, everybody just get out of the way. I don't even want to touch one of these either. Well, that, that was the problem on earlier punts. There was too many people crowding around him. That time he was smart. He said, hey, get away from the ball. Let, let's get it for our offense and see if we can move the football. Tough night for quarterbacks so far here at Auburn. The Bo Jackson on the sideline. You're probably thinking he's going to be part of our AFLAC trivia question. Maybe he is. I don't know. Who are the four Auburn University players to be selected first overall? in the NFL draft. And you thought it was going to be something as simple as who were the three Heisman Trophy winners for Auburn. Oh, no, no, no. Think it over. Four number one picks from Auburn. Right now, Auburn leads seven to three. As Florida with the ball goes to Chris Rainey again. And Rainey skips in the lane, picks up some decent yardage, and we pick up Reese Davis in the shooting. Fred, Sports Center right now presented by Discover Card. Texas A&M ran away from Baylor late, 55-28. Robert Griffin III threw for 430 yards. That's a school record. Ryan Tannehill upstaged him with six touchdown passes in his 400-yard passing day. A&M after some demoralizing uh, losses after having big leads today, they hold on to it. Learned to finish today. Yep. Second and five, quick throw. Ooh, tough catch by Frankie Hammond, and then he's buried by a whole group of Tigers led by McNeil. Well, to Charmin Bell, what a play by him because he was being blocked by Dunbar. And, and to Charmin Bell just would not be pushed out of the way. Watch him fight through the block and push right into the receiver. He doesn't get the tackle credit by himself, but he made the play. Big third down here. Florida try to keep something going here offensively. What, that, what Florida likes is with these bunch sets crossing routes in front of the quarterback's face. That includes the tight end. Brissett fires to the outside, a wide open Hammond. And he sidesteps a would-be tackler, and he's got a nice gain down to the 41-yard line. Nice Picks up the 25. Yeah, nice throw by Brissett. Stayed right in the pocket. Good, solid protection. I do like this guy's composure. For a kid who was playing high school last year and didn't expect to play much this year, he's, he's a composed guy and obviously very talented. Big, strong arm, shows it on that out route. Florida goes to a two tight end set now at the 42-yard line of Auburn. Brissett, here comes Lemonier, and he runs right past him. And now, on the ground, picks up five. Good decision. Again, feel the rush, but keep your eyes downfield. Don't automatically take off and run. Lemonier's going to come right around the right side. So you got to feel the rush as a quarterback, step up, Second down four. and then make a decision if you have to run. And in this case, a good decision for a positive gain of five. And it gives you a second down and a manageable five at the 36-yard line. Three wideouts this time for Brissett. 
The freshman out of West Palm Beach. Got him throw. Gets it out there in a hurry to Hammond. Hammond slips, though. Does keep his footing, puts his hand down, and almost got to the first down marker. Yeah, good decision. I mean, you had to throw here because Auburn was putting more guys in around the ball than you could block. I mean, look at all these blue jerseys creeping in here. You've got to throw the football. They're daring you to throw. They're crowding the line of scrimmage. They don't get much, but that's the right call. That's the right choice in that situation. Now you got to wonder if you put Burton in here. It's third down at about a yard. And he is in the huddle at the 33-yard line. They're taking a lot of time. They're going to let the play clock go down and call a timeout before this play. Will Muschamp looks at this third down play as being critical. And they takes the timeout with five and a half to go timeout. in the half. Florida. It's their third and final timeout of the half. Burton, who's taken several snaps in the shotgun tonight, has one shovel pass for completion. And his run for positive yardage. And we'll see if he comes out after this timeout. With the timeout, we've got an opportunity to tell you about our trivia question that we asked you a little bit earlier. Who are the four Auburn University players to be selected first overall in the NFL draft? Well, we knew Bo Jackson's one of them, right? Cam Newton's one, we know that. Yep. But did you know, do you remember the infamous draft of 88? One the Atlanta Falcons would just as soon forget. No offense to Andre Bruce. He was a great college player. He didn't quite pan out with the Falcons. And Tucker Fredrickson with the Giants back in the 60s. And of course, Pat Sullivan was a Heisman Trophy winner here too, but not a number one pick. That guy was, and what a great two-sport, unbelievable superstar. You saw him talking to Michael Dyer before the game on the field with some words of wisdom. It's always nice when you get a Heisman Trophy winning back, standing out there in the warm-ups. Giving you some little hints. Yeah. Well, third and one, they did keep Brissett in the game. Now, he's a big guy. He's 6'3, 240 pounds. You've also got Burton and Rainey in the game. Burton just on a wing of that backfield. Brissett, play action. Going to throw back. Get the first. And he does get the first, just barely. And it's Bur Burton as a receiver this time. Didn't get much, but he got enough. As we told you, he can do a little bit of everything. He picks up the first down. If you fool them and get them to overcommit, maybe this is a big play. But once they reacted, you got to get the first down, and that's what Burton does. A nice throw over a little bit of pressure in the backfield by Brissett. So it's first down at the 31 yard line. Now back the three wideouts actually read the tight end as one right there on the top of your screen. Corner blitz coming down the blow. Straight up the middle with Rainey. And Rainey goes for five, and we go to Reese. Up in the third quarter. And Alabama, LSU on a collision course early November. Only a yard pickup this time, but a flag flies in late. It'll be in the general vicinity of a holding call. Boy, this will be a costly holding if it's against Florida because they've got things going. They're ahead of the chains. They're in the in scoring territory. Personal foul on the defense. Face mask number 21. That penalty is half the distance from the end of the run. Automatic first down. And so it's not against Florida. Yeah. It's a big one against Freeman, the middle linebacker. Well, and it wasn't on the tackle. They called the penalty on Freeman, and he was tangled up with a blocker. It, it wasn't in making the tackle that the face mask was called. Here he is right here. With Kyle Coney. And you're right. So a costly penalty on Auburn. At the 13-yard line. Four minutes remaining in the half. Florida with an opportunity here in the red zone to take the lead. Toss to Rainey with a blocker in front. And Florida. Auburn right there. Stretches it out and knocks him out of bounds as we take a look at the red zone brought to you by Verizon. And in this case, Auburn has allowed almost 88% of the opponents in red zone possessions and that's in the bottom third at least in the country and see if they can hold up to Florida right here 
With the ball inside the nine. Ted Roof certainly is hoping so. Well, you still have Burton in the game, who's not a true fullback, not a sledgehammer kind of blocking fullback. Be alert for him coming out of the backfield as a receiver, though. Tenth play of the drive. Here's a long stretch to Rainey. Rainey, and again, Auburn stretches it out. And T-Bell's had a nice first half defensively for Auburn as well. Let's check in with Holly. Guys, just watching the body language right now of the running back for Florida, Chris Rainey. He has had that great one-two punch with Jeff Demps coming in to spell him. And right now, he looks tired to me, guys. He's had a lot of action in this first half, a lot more than he's been used to through the course of the regular season. Well, he's not the biggest guy in the world, you know, 175 pounds, maybe. I'll tell you, he's tough, though. Now, they can spell him with Gillisley. I mean, that's the other guy they have because they ideally like to have Demps and Rainey on the field at the same time to put that speed threat. He's out now. Burton's in at quarterback. On third and five, Burton comes up to the line. I think Auburn's calling a timeout now, expecting option. Want to make sure they're set on this third down. Well, they had one to burn with 2.44 to go, that's for sure. Trying to prevent Florida from taking the lead. Timeout. We've been talking all night about Chris Rainey having to carry the load without Jeff Demps. Holly talked about it a minute ago. He's had a busy first half already. I'm impressed with his toughness. I, I am surprised he's not back on the field, though. You know, with Auburn calling the timeout, I thought that would give him the necessary rest. He's the best player on your team. I'm surprised he's not in right now on this third down play. A third and five. Third down five on the eight yard line. Previous two third downs, Brissett has picked up first downs. That would suggest pass to me here with Rainey on the sideline. Jordan Reed goes out to the top of your screen. Here comes a blitz. The lob to Reed. Did he get it? Out of bounds, they say. And he had a bad landing as well. I'll tell you what. They, they got what they wanted. They started him in tight, shifted him out, and isolated him on a safety, Nico Thorpe. That's the matchup they wanted. You throw that ball to the back of the end zone, a pretty good throw. Ooh. But the yeah, ball came yeah. out, you see the ball at the end, as he made a great effort in trying to get his feet down and get control of the football. The ball was put in a good spot by Brissett, and Reed just not able to come up with the clean catch. And there you see the ball Coming loose at the end, and Will Muschamp thought touchdown. But no, so we're going to have to settle for a field goal attempt again by Sturgis, and it's a 25-yard kick to try to cut it to a one-point game. It's up, and it's good. So again, Florida gets in the red zone. A Ted Roos defense comes up with a nice play in the corner. And Florida draws within one. Reminder coming up tomorrow night. Reese Davis, who we've heard from several times here in the first half already, and Kirk Herbstreet and Craig James, they'll have the BCS countdown tomorrow night. They'll unveil the first poll and analyze who are contenders and pretenders. BCS countdown presented by Discover tomorrow night, 8.15 Eastern, continuing on ESPNU at 9 o'clock. And we showed the mock BCS standing style a little bit earlier, and you've got to know that uh, Georgia Tech won't be 10th yeah. after losing today. Clemson and Maryland are playing right now, and if they lose that, they're not going to be in the top 10. Yeah. But you got to figure that uh, Auburn, LSU, and Oklahoma are 1, 2, and 3 in some juggled yeah. form. Yeah, throw those three names into a hat and pull whichever two out. That's 1 and 2. The, all three of those teams are playing at a higher level, I think, than anybody else. Oklahoma State's playing real well. Boise State's playing well. Well, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, that's kind of the next tier, I think. But those top three, uh, really good. It's amazing being around these two SEC coaches, Will Muschamp and Gene Chizik, this, and this week. And, and, you know, everybody's admitting right now, they just go, hey, those other two teams are really good, <laughs> yeah. meaning Alabama and LSU. And they're different. You know, I mean, Florida played both of those defenses. And Alabama much bigger, stronger, more physical. LSU a faster defense. Both presented great challenges. Caleb and Bray are back, waiting on the kick. Short, way short. Going to have to hustle to get there. But Caleb does it about the 18-yard line. And now weaves his way to the 30. And but speaking of, Reese Davis, Reese, what do you got? 
Brad, coming up on the Wendy's Halftime Report, Mark May and Lou Holtz will join me. It could have been a Pyrrhic victory for South Carolina on the road against Mississippi State. We'll update Marcus Lattimore's condition. Unbeaten's tumble on the day. A couple more in trouble. Stanford's having a lot of trouble on the Palouse against Washington State. And Clemson is trailing Maryland on ESPNU right now. And we'll also show you how Michigan State tied shoelace in knots for Michigan. That was one of the unbeatens that dropped today. Michigan, as did Illinois, to Ohio State. Here's a sweep. McCaleb. About seven before Florida could track him down. Maybe eight yards. In fact, Josh Shaw made the tackle without a 215 remaining in the half. Auburn clinging to a one-point lead. I think if Auburn converts this first down, I think you'll see Gus Malzahn try to get a little aggressive and see if they can get in scoring position right before the half. McCaleb and Dyer both in there. It's Dyer the second man through, and there's the first down Todd's talking about. Pick up a five. And I think they'll go tempo here. They're right on their sideline, the hash mark nearest to their sideline. They'll get lined up, try to get a little fatigue on this Florida defense here right at the end of the first half, see if they can add three points more. Now the Tigers look to the sideline for those flip cards that they follow. Make an adjustment. And Trotter with a quick throw to the near side. Completes. Cross midfield to Benton. Uh, good for Benton. He's the guy who had the touchdown earlier in the game, the only touchdown of the game. Had two critical drops last week. He was so excited to have an opportunity to be the guy with Blake and Reed hurt. And he had a very difficult game. One was a clean drop. The other one went off his hands, a catchable pass that was intercepted by Arkansas. But he's come back with a good week of practice and a good night tonight. We saw Emory Blake there on the sideline in uniform but hasn't been used yet coming off an injury. Here's Frazier with a quick throw out to McCaleb. Oh, what a nice open field tackle by Matt Elam. Yeah, he was one of your impact players. And, uh, Beautiful job in space against a difficult guy. Just under a minute and a half in the half. Auburn trying to pick up more points before the break. Time out. This will be a 30 seconds. Three in a row since Charlie. A face mask. A late face mask call that's going to give them a first down. They had him cleanly stopped on third and short. We saw Dyer getting up. Personal foul on the defense. Face match, number six. 15 yards from the previous spot. The penalty carries an automatic first down. Uh, sorry about the technical difficulties we had there for just a minute, but it, Jay Howard with a face mask on Michael Dyer has given Auburn new life when it looked like they had him all wrapped up they yeah. did it would have been a loss on the play but you We're saw number six in the face mask of Dyer and now that moves Auburn all the way down to the 34 yard line of Florida trick play potential you got McCaleb oh, they tried to run fumble Ruski yep. and they weren't able to pick up the ball <laughs> not only that but William Green was right on top of it. I mean, I don't know if they still call that play that, but that's what they were doing, and McCaleb couldn't pick up the football. They're going to put the ball right down on the ground, and McCaleb not able to cleanly pick it up. So not Trotter to throw on second half. Zips it down the sideline and in and out of the hands of Benton. And there's another catchable yeah. ball. Well, that time he heard Josh Evans coming. I don't know if Josh Evans has big footsteps or if he was screaming on his way to the football, but Benton certainly heard him because he took his eyes off the football and looked up to see number 24 and didn't make the catch. And that's third down and long, and they're going to waste an opportunity here for points before halftime unless they pick this up. They're not in field goal range. Florida might have jumped. Yep, free play. Trotter with a long ball, and it's incomplete. But there, the flag down. They're going to get another chance. You know, they scored their first touchdown, or their only touchdown on a free play. Yep. It was offsides on Jay Howard or Dominique Easley the first time. Leon Orr just got an yep. earful from Will Muschamp, so you know who the call's going to be on. Offside on the defense. Five yards from the previous spot. Well, you know, it, it's, it's a silly penalty. It's a silly, costly penalty because it gives them a free play. Now, now they've got another shot at third down and less yardage needed. 
Not only that, you couldn't be any closer to the ball unless you right. were the center on that one. Just wait for the ball to move. So Leon Orr picks up the penalty. It makes it third down again, but now a manageable third and six. Close your ears and open your eyes. Exactly. <laughs> They almost jumped again. And now Auburn and the entire team, with the exception of the offensive line, and most of those guys are looking at the sideline as well. See, Florida showed blitz. They showed pressure, and that's why they raised up and changed the play at the line of scrimmage. Let's see if Florida checks. They're going to check out of it. Going to have to hustle, though. They barely got the snap away. It's a draw play to McCaleb. Trying to outrun that Florida defense, though, is a tough task. They only got a couple. Well, they got to use the timeout, which will be their last. They'll let that clock run down as far as they can, then they'll bring the field goal unit on. Barkey's long this year is 43. The reason Auburn wants these points, I mean, th th this is going to be a game of momentum. Yeah. And, and it's not going to be a high scoring deal. We've already seen that. They want to add three here and then go to the locker room and get the ball to start the third quarter. I'm out. Auburn. The third and final time out of the half. This is your 30 second timeout. So, Barnard and Penley will have one play, and it'll be a field goal attempt by Cody Parkey. Don't forget, Sunday NFL countdown returns. Three hours, best in the business. Chris Berman and the guys will have all the latest updates from stadiums around the league right up until kickoff. Sunday NFL countdown presented by IBM on ESPN tomorrow at 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Brad Ness, the top, Blackledge, Holly Road, our ESPN crew. Jordan Harris Stadium in Auburn, Alabama, where the Tigers have a one point lead and they're going to try to add three to it here on the final play of the second quarter. We mentioned Cody Parkey, his longest field goal this season, 43 yards. And he's warming up his leg for what would be a 45 yarder right here. Ironically enough, a Florida native out of Jupiter, a yep. sophomore. Played a little football catch with his younger brother, Hunter, I think, today, out in the parking lot of the hotel. <laughs> Parkey will try to park one down the middle here at the goalposts from 45 yards away. High snack. They got the hole down, and he's going to miss this one to the right. So Florida rejoices on the final play. Gene Chiswick says, that's all right. We still got the lead. Will Muschamp and... Coach Boom, yep. pretty excited that they're going to go to the locker room only down one on the road. And you see, just pushed it a little yep. bit. And I think the high snap yep. might have had something to do with it. Well, Auburn may have the lead, but Florida's got the momentum. Right. And, and that is going to be a big deal the rest of this game. Let's check in with Holly. Well, Coach, the only time Auburn was able to score was after that muffed punt. What did you see on that play from Chris Rainey? Oh, I can't really comment, to be honest with you. Even if you wanted to. Uh, no way. Did you think he had an opportunity to catch the ball? I can't comment. All right. Your offense has struggled, though, Coach. Chris Rainey looks like he's a little winded. What else can you bring out of the back to give him a break in the second half? Well, we've moved the ball. They've done a nice job holding the edges on defense. They're tackling well. They're playing hard. we got a tight ball game. This is like 1985 right here. Okay. <laughs> You, you liked 1985, but on your defense, you've been able to hold but penalties. What did you just say to your guys on those well, silly we just, penalties? we got to play smarter. We've addressed it. We practice every day. Obviously, I'm not doing my job. It'll get corrected. Thanks, Coach. All right, a couple of questions unanswered. I can't comment. Well, this is the play that Will didn't want to comment on. His team's only trailing by one, though, as we go to our Wendy's halftime report. Reese, Mark, and Lou standing by in the studio. Time presented by Hampton Hotels, 7-6. Auburn in front, very tight game and tight statistically as you take a look at the first half stats. Yeah, there are uh, not a lot of big numbers on there. The, the one number that's not on there, turnovers, Florida with two, Auburn with none. And we talked about what was going to be key to the game, which team took care of the ball better. Florida had two turnovers, Auburn none. And which pair of quarterbacks, and we've only seen one for Florida, right. of course, Burton counts, which one can generate some passing game, some chunk plays. Barrett Trotter's got the touchdown pass, but to combine the two teams have thrown for 78 yards. And of course, the controversial muff punt that Will Muschamp didn't want to comment about, but everybody else has been talking about in the press box at halftime is really the difference in the ball game. Auburn will get the ball first to start the second half, and they'll take it at the four yard line on the kick return. And Therese got an opening. Therese out to the 41 yard line, 36 yard return. 
Let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, huge news for Auburn. They're making a change at quarterback. I asked Gene Chizik coming out of the tunnel if they would, and he said, you'll have to watch the game. What I see is Barrett Trotter, their starter on the sideline, holding in the signs that call the plays. Clint Mosley, their number two. All the guys have been patting him on the back. He's excited and juiced up. Coach said, whatever we do, we need some energy on offense, and maybe this change is what they're looking for. Well, Mosley completed his only pass last week in the Arkansas game. Here he is on the pitch to Dyer. And Dyer in the first play of the third quarter with a nice game into Florida territory just that quickly. Well, you you got to get something going in your passing game. You're not going to be able to just run the ball down the throat of this Florida defense. You're not as strong physically as Alabama and LSU up front to do that. you got to mix in and get some chunk plays passing it, and they're hoping Mosley can do that. And here he pitches it to Dyer. Dyer's going to try to change direction, come back the other way, and he'll lose yardage. Loss of about three on the play. Lorente well, McCray did a nice job of turning that play back inside. As Holly mentioned at the start of the game, McCray playing an outside linebacker defensive end type position because Ronald Powell is not here. We asked both Gus Malzahn and Gene Chizik, would you have gone to this guy a little bit earlier last week? Against Arkansas, they both said no. Well, here he is to start the third quarter and fires over the intended receiver's head. Well, he had him. Yep, Jay Wisner. Yep, he had Wisner on the crossing route. It's the same route they ran earlier when Trotter tried to throw it deep, and he had the crossing route. Wisner, number 84, is going to open up right into a voided area, and he just throws it behind him. Almost picked off on the backside by Roberson. He hit the deck. Near the 25 yard line. And now another third and long. Auburn one for seven on third downs in the game, and many of them third and over 10 yards needed. And Ledge, Henry Blake's in the lineup down at the bottom of the screen. The leading receiver for Auburn has been injured. Well, I would jam him up. I mean, I would jam him up and see what he can do. Mosley looking to go the other way. Now pulls it down, goes to the sideline, fires complete to Lutzen Kirkin. He's going to be sure of the first down, though, but he did get it to the 41 yard line. The Barrett Trotter, we talked to him yesterday, and it seems like his confidence was a little bit shaken even yeah. in our meeting yeah, from all the did. hits he's taken in the last few weeks. You know, and his left shoulder's banged up. Really, you know, he played exceptionally well early in the year, and then, you know, well enough. First half of the Clemson game, he played really well, and then really starting from the second half of the Clemson game, things started to go in the other direction for him a little bit. Stephen Clark again to punt. Again, he leads the SEC and punts inside the 20. Trying to knock one down in the corner. It's going to go out of bounds near the 15, somewhere around there anyway. Let's see where they spot it. Oh, they're going to come up the sideline to the 18-yard line. Well, let's see if we see Jeff Driscoll at all in the third quarter from the Florida side. We've seen the new Auburn quarterback. Charlie Weiss told us that Driscoll would play, that there was no timetable of when he would play, but he's not been in the ballgame yet. And just like that, Todd, who said we'd see as many as four quarterbacks, maybe more, we're on number five right now. Second one. For Florida. Now Driscoll is a much better runner than Brissett is. They're both big, strong arm guys, but Driscoll can really go when he runs. Burton and Rainey in the backfield. It's Rainey dragged down. Great play defensively by Nozagua. Loss of eight. The captain, one of the captains of the defense, the sophomore to Mansfield, Texas, with a big time play. Yeah, just a really quick move inside. He got inside the, the tackle, used his quickness, and held on to that jersey. Well, you put in your second quarterback of the night. They lose eight yards, and now he's inside his own 10 going. This is great. They're set, looking on. Driscoll, the other freshman, at the controls right now. And he's going to throw it near his own goal line. Maybe. Crossing route incomplete in and out of the hands of Rainey and Darren Bates. Made another nice play defensively. Well, the thing that Jeff Driscoll has to guard against right here is he's excited to be in the game. 
He wants to make something happen. He wants to last here in the second half, but he can't be foolish and make a dangerous throw now on third and very long deep in his own territory. Got to get all the way to the 28-yard line for a first down. The crowd's going to let him know about it down in that end zone. On third and 18. They'll play it safe on a draw play. Rainey's going nowhere. Got about two. But they didn't want to put him in harm's way and make him throw on a third down in what seemed impossible. And Rainey's losing his number yeah. one off his back. Yeah, we're, we're past the age of the tearaway jerseys. <laughs> My man's got a tear, tearaway number. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, even if that one comes all the way off, Auburn's defense doesn't know where he is. Yeah, I think so. Christie dropped the ball trying to punt it and now it's off the side of his foot and out of bounds somewhere around the 33-yard line. Here's a guy who had a 67-yarder in the first half and he just dropped the ball, missed his foot, and it's an 18-yard kick. Wow. Yeah, there was no pressure either. I mean, it wasn't like he felt rushed. He just extended it too far and dropped it. Don't see many of those. Yeah, well, right in, here we are again now, field position. Big part of the kicking game. Auburn has had the field position edge in the first half, and right away, they got field position here. Florida special teams haven't been. No. The 30-yard line, Auburn with a chance here. Mosley's second series. He's going to keep it on a quarterback draw. Stopped by Jonathan Bostic, the middle linebacker, after he got four. Florida can't keep giving Auburn gifts and expect to stay in the ball game. Only trailing by one, though, here in the third quarter. It's Dyer, and he is bottled up after a one-yard pickup. Jay Howard was the first guy there. See, the difference with having either Trotter or Mosley in the game at quarterback, neither one of them is a dangerous running threat. So the Florida defense, even though there's misdirection and there's read-type plays, they're going to lock in on Dyer, or they're going to lock in on McCaleb. Now, if Frazier's in the game with McCaleb and Dyer, now you've got to play it a little safer and expect the quarterback run as much as anything else. President Bush was better than one for eight on his third down conversions, I think. We'll see how Auburn does at the 25-yard line. <laughs> Gonna have to hustle just to get the snap. Mosley, screen in the middle, he just threw it away. Wanted to get it to McCaleb, and Florida blew that up. And you know what? Gene Chizik was sprinting down the sideline to call timeout because he didn't want the play clock to go out. Probably wishes he would have called timeout there because that was a, a bad-looking play on third down. Tried to go screen. Good quick pressure on the inside by Florida. And another good stop in a sudden change situation for the Florida defense. Remember, Parkey missed one from 45. 43 being his best so far this year. He's going to try this one from 42 yards away. Ryan White to hold. The snap last time on that long one was high. This one's perfect, but the kick is not. Wide left. He's missed one by about that far to the right, one to the left, and a happy punter is saying, okay, we survived another scare. Score doesn't change. Excited Florida coach, his team only trailing by one. Good one coming up behind us tonight. Rock Eisweiler and the uh, Sun Devils. Take out Darren Thomas in the ninth-ranked Oregon Ducks College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels when we are through here tonight. Parkey has missed to the right and the left from 45 and 42, so the score doesn't change. Auburn still with a one-point lead. Ten minutes remaining in the third quarter. Jeff Driscoll in at quarterback for Florida. Rainey on a draw, trying to cut to the sideline, looking for some help, and he ran himself into a four-yard gain. He's got a new jersey on. He's got his number one back. 
I'll tell you what, they, they got to get some of these other guys. They, they've got some talented, athletic guys as we take a look at Rainey again on this play. It's just been all Rainey. I mean, Jordan Reed's not been a factor. DuBose, Deontay Thompson, they've got athletic, big-time players that need to make some plays. Driscoll comes up throwing to Jordan Reed, who dives short of the first down by a little bit, I think. You know, Rainey has been carrying the load completely. You know, Burton gave him a little bit of a spark when he was in a quarterback running some option, but they've got to get some of these perimeter guys to make some plays. Frankie Hammonds had a couple of catches, yeah. but not anything big. And again, if you're just joining us, Jeff Dimps on the sideline, but not in pads. Third down and short, less than a yard. You got to sneak this. This 235 pound quarterback. He'll give it to the fullback, and he's got a first down. Yeah. Hunter Joyer. That's the place to run it. Just to the right, there was a little bit of a gap to the right of the center. I thought they'd just sneak it. But the next safest thing is to give it to the up back. About a 245 pound fullback gets the first down for Florida. Jalapio got a nice block, the right guard, number 67 there. You can always tell where he is when he's leading the way. He's got the best hair on the field. Driscoll will keep it. And he shows the wheels that Todd talked about. Might have another first down. We'll check that after we check in with Reese. All right, Brad, it's time for a Dr. Pepper 10 conference update. Maryland and Clemson. C.J. Brown finds Matt Furstenberg for the touchdown. And Clemson, one of the unbeaten teams, they are in trouble. 35-17. Maryland has the lead. So Georgia Tech went from the unbeaten ranks, courtesy of Virginia, and Maryland might do the same to Clemson. The top two teams in the ACC, one having lost and one in deep trouble in the third quarter. Here they're going to bring the sticks from the far side to have a look at this. Whether or not it's first down. It's as close as you can get. Just a few lengths shy of the first down. Nice opportunity to maybe take a shot down the field, try to stretch this defense. As you see Driscoll trying to stretch for the first down. Just short. Second and less than one now. I would think play action here, get good protection, and try to send one of those fast receivers down the field. Driscoll was injured, as was Brantley in the Alabama game. John, by the way, we haven't talked about him. The starter, we did mention him earlier that he had started the season pretty good. And Will Muschamp telling us yesterday that the hope is, is that Brantley will be back for the matchup in Jacksonville with Georgia. And they get a week off after this one. They're hoping to have him back. That's what that's what he's shooting for as well. Right. So second down and inches. Rainey, flea flicker, back to Driscoll, loads and fires, got a man there, it's Reed, and he overshot him. It would have been a touchdown. Well, they had the shot. I mean, that, that's the perfect time to try it. Not only did they go play action, they went flea flicker, and Jordan Reed was wide open. You get a guy wide open, throw it right at him. Don't worry about leading him too much. I mean, he's got five yards on the defender. Mm -hmm. Just throw it right at him. Even if he has to slow down a step, that's better than overthrowing him by five yards. Second straight, third and inches on this drive. And Driscoll in the backfield is going to be brought down. I didn't like that. You put the quarterback in the shotgun on third and inches, so you automatically take the ball five yards away from your first down. Just leave him under center and either run the fullback again or sneak it. Jonathan Evans makes the play. The outside linebacker, 35, just stayed home and held on. So the two freshman quarterbacks, and there's the fifth-year senior who'd love to be out there, but still in that walking boot. You know, it's cool that he's here, though, that he's traveling. You right. normally don't bring injured guys, but that's a senior leader for you. And now Bray. Gonna get out of the way of this punt. This is gonna be a dandy 
for Christie. It's going to roll dead around the seventh. 7.26 remaining third quarter. The young quarterback talking with his offensive coordinator, the veteran, on the sideline. This is the next thing before you get to the NFL. It ain't the Big 12. It ain't the Pac-10. This is as close as you're ever going to get to the NFL. This league, every week, against everybody. Y'all signed up for it. You're here. And it ain't changing. Gene Chizik in a team meeting earlier this year with those comments. And right now we got kind of a, I don't know, a Steeler Raven game going or something like that. It's 7-6. to six. Defensive struggle. Some miscues on special teams have been costly tonight to Florida. And on a broken play, Auburn has the only touchdown of the night. On a free play, I should say, on a penalty against the Gators that Trotter took advantage of with a touchdown pass to D'Angelo Benton. That's our only touchdown of the night. Now it's Mosley in at quarterback. And Dyer looking for a place to run. Only got two. Holly? Well, guys, they're falling like flies over here for Florida. Caleb Sturgis, their kicker, is out for the game. So, Christy, their punter, will have to take over place kicking duties. And right now on the defensive front, big number 44, Leon Orr, is into the game. A redshirt freshman taking over for Dominic Easley, who ran out and we think may have had x rays on a right arm injury. Also, their left guard is out, guys. Easley, they're retaping his right hand, so a hand or forearm as Mosley goes deep. And what a catch! Quindarius Carr. 42 yards, biggest play of the night. Well, this is a beautiful throw by Mosley and a little push off. Carr got away with right at the end of the play. You see the defender, Watkins, calling for the penalty against the offense. There was a slight push before the catch. And that back to the ground game as Dyer cuts it outside. Goes down inside the 45-yard line to pick up a five, and we pick up Reese Davis. Reese. Brad, another of the unbeaten Kansas State going on the road against Texas Tech. Back and forth game. Colin Klein to Chris Harper, the former Oregon player. A missed extra point early in the game. The only difference right now, 28-27, third quarter in Lubbock. Here a one-point game with six minutes remaining. Frazier back in at quarterback. The freshman Kyle Frazier joined by Dyer behind him. They fake the counter and it's Frazier running all the way on this one. He's short of the first down, but he did get it to the 40. He's about two feet shy of the first down marker. Now one of the things for Auburn too, Phil Lutzenkirk and one of their real leaders, a key blocker is really favoring his right arm, right elbow, something. He just took himself out of the game. And his backup is Ladarius Phillips, number 37, who's a big fella, six foot, 291 pounds, but just doesn't have the playing experience that Lutzen Kirken has. There you see the 291 pounds poured into the Auburn jersey. Dyer, the Wildcat, direct snap, hitting the backfield, and I mean, he's going to lose big time yardage. Good job by the Florida defense. Matt Elam and company. And that'll fire up their head coach. Well, we talked about Ladarius Phillips coming in for Lutzen Kirken. All right, you got to be ready to strap it on when you come in because this Florida defense is coming after you. They run right through him and bottle up the play. Elam finishes the play, but they just got penetration right away into the backfield, and Dyer had nowhere to go. Sharif Floyd is the guy that was head on with Phillips, and that helped blow that play up. Stephen Clark. Set to punt again. And you expect 291 pounds to go forward, yeah. not backwards. <laughs> Here's the kick way up in the air. Rainey, again, a gun shy about even <laughs> catching the football anymore on the punt returns because of what happened in the first half. Let's it bounce right at the 20 yard line. Bill Muschamp, going to hit butt somebody? Nope, going to jump into the arms of McCray. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by the 2011 Fusion from Ford. Get in and drive one. 
Tell you what, they had a better contractor than I have because that new indoor, indoor yeah. facility went up in a hurry, didn't it? Yeah. BCS <laughs> games have a way of doing that. Yeah. Championships, not just crystal trophies. That's right. <laughs> Beautiful indoor facility here at Auburn. Loaded from the 20. Comes a blitz off the corner. Driscoll wants to throw that way and does to Burton. And Burton's going to get a first down. Pick up of a dozen. Now, see, earlier we saw Florida try to throw a screen like that where it's just a quick block, but the, you've got to get rid of it expecting corner pressure. Burton just gets enough of a block on the corner, White coming to slow him down, and Driscoll able to throw the screen right in the area that White left. First down for the Gators, trailing by one. Play action, Driscoll. Looked like he was going to pull it down and run, but he throws instead and got it to Reed. And did he catch it? Yes, he did. Trying to understand why the referee threw his hat down. The linesman threw his hat. Usually you throw that if he stepped out of bounds. I was going to say he didn't step out of bounds and come back in, did he? Uh, yeah, he did. His left foot was out of bounds. The ruling on the field is that the receiver stepped out of bounds on his own, caught the ball out of bounds. It's an incomplete pass. Good yeah. call, guys. And a great shot from the truck. So it brings up second down and 10. Under four minutes remaining in the third quarter. Here's another look. You see there's his left foot. Yeah, and that's on Reed. He's just got to know where he is on the field. And you, you, you just can't run out of bounds. And there's nobody even over there pushing him. And then tiptoes back in. Yeah. <laughs> he got both feet down, but he had one out to start with. Risco straight drop this time. Deep ball, yeah, incomplete. He forced it into double coverage. Again, with a young quarterback, you, you got to teach them to not be greedy, take what the defense gives you, read through your project, projection, progressions, work deep to short. If it's not there deep, come to your next read and then dump it down to a back like Rainey if nothing's there. I'm sure last year's National Player of the Year in Gatorade, Florida Player of the Year, you get away with that, but not in the SEC. Three out of ten on third down conversions for Florida. Driscoll, here comes Lemonade. And he just made the Lemonade of the Florida quarterback. Yeah, he got around Xavier Nixon. He got, you know, there's got to be a big game for Lemonier. He's a, throw, a Florida guy from Hialeah, Florida. He had previously in his recruiting committed to Florida before changing his mind and coming to Auburn. And that was a beautiful spin move. They were The coaches were saying, hey, stop rushing up the field all the time. That time he started up, spun back in for the sack. For the punt, Bray will take at the 33-yard line. 34 yard line. And they're looking for a flag. Auburn's got the ball back with a one point lead still. Nothing's changed here in the third quarter. Yeah. 13 punts, 13 points. <laughs> points, punts. Yeah, the same. Potatoes, potatoes, whatever. <laughs> I'll tell you what we haven't seen yet is we have not seen a trick play from Auburn. Well, they tried the fumble rooster. Oh, yeah, they did. That's right. All right. And I'll expect another one here before the game's over. Kyle Frazier, the quarterback. With McCaleb with him, he's going to take it straight up the middle. And got near the 40-yard line. Check in with Reese Davis. Reese. Fred, Georgia and Vanderbilt. Bulldogs have just taken a 23 to 7 lead. They kick off to Andre Hal. He's got an alley. Have fun, expect to win. 96 yards. James Franklin's team's hanging around. 23 14 dogs. Here in the SEC on ESPN 7 6 Tigers leading the Gators. 83rd meeting between these two SEC teams, but they haven't played in four years. 2007 was the last get together. Here's Mosley, a uh, play action, hit as he throws, but he got it to Lutzen Kirkin for the first down. Uh, really, uh, had he not been hit as he threw, that thing might have sailed over uh, Lutzen Kirkin. It, it might have, but I'll tell you what, it was a nice touch because Matt Elam was in coverage, the safety, and he couldn't throw this flat. He had to put some air under it to get it over Elam, and that's a beautiful touch to Lutzen Kirkin. And a first down just outside the 45. Now back to the ground game. 
into the secondary. Michael Dyer going backwards, forwards, sideways, all the way to the 28-yard line. And uh, that play looks like what Florida saw the last couple weeks with Trent Richardson running, Spencer Ware running, missed tackles at the point of attack, and a big bruising back just carrying defenders for extra yards. That's been an all-too-familiar sight for this Florida defense the last three weeks. 18 yards. In fact, this time they'll drop for a two-yard loss by Matt Elam. Elam, a good tackler from that safety spot. Sophomore out of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. Well, the negative plays. Both of these defenses have done a nice job creating some negative plays and putting that offense behind schedule. In this case, the behind schedule is second down and 11. As we're down here in the one-minute mark of the quarter. I hope the president's watching tonight. He's getting a lot of airtime. There's no debating that either. Play action for Mosley. And he's in trouble. Flags down. We're going to have a holding call as he throws it away. Chad Slade, I think, is going to be the guilty party. Trying to keep easily and those guys on the inside yeah. away from the quarterback. Now Chad Slade is starting tonight for the injured Jared Cooper. He had to come in and play a good portion of the game last week. The red shirt freshman. Holding. Offense, number 62. A penalty is 10 yards from the previous spot. Second down. There you see him, 62. Got a hold of that jersey. Easily is really an active defensive tackle. I mean, uh, again, he's got the speed. He wears number two. Six foot two, 285 pounds. He's powerful and he's fast. Second and 21 now for Auburn. At the big pass play, a 42 yarder. And now they're struggling to maintain their field position. It has been a game of that tonight for sure. A minute to play, third quarter. Mosley with time. Deep middle. Got his man. Hudson Kirk in first down. Needed 21, got 23. Well, Lutz and Kirk can put a great move on the safety. Josh Evans, number 24, and then Mosley with perfect timing, getting it there before the other safety, Shaw, could come over to make the tackle. Florida defense lets Auburn off the hook in a long yardage situation. Now they go back to the ground game as they are down inside the 15 in the closing moments of the third quarter. Auburn's offense with a little bit of spark behind the number two quarterback, Clint Mosley, who's thrown it pretty well since taking over for Barrett Trotter. I think Chis Gene Chizik wants to let his offense catch their breath. Let's go ahead and play the first play of the first fourth quarter on this play. He meets his team as they come to the sideline in a one-point game in the SEC on ESPN. Hang around for the fourth quarter. Could get interesting. End of three, Auburn seven, Florida six. As we're set to start the fourth quarter, remind you Monday Night Football, Dolphins getting together with the Jets. 8.30 Eastern, also available live on Watch ESPN. Coverage starts 7 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's. Fourth quarter, Auburn leading by one. Trying to add to it here. Kyle Frazier in at quarterback. Gives it to McCaleb on the corner. Ontario McCaleb, did he get there? He did. Touchdown, Auburn. Fourteen yard score. Caps a sixteen six yard drive. On the first play of the fourth quarter. Parkey in for the point after. He's good. Well, Auburn kind of fooled the Florida defense with formation. They really overloaded the right side. They made it look like they were going to run this way. And then they bring McCaleb back this way. It's not X 
It's not great blocking by any stretch. It was just the speed of McCaleb, and they caught the Florida defense expecting something else, and the speed of Ontario McCaleb got it to the end zone. Three Gators out there, all great athletes, but not quick enough to find number 23 in time. This is a guy we knew would impact the game tonight with his touches. That his best touch of the night, a 14-yard touchdown. You know, and that you go back to Gene Chizik saying to his offense, let's not run a play here. Let's let the, the clock go out at the end of the third quarter. Let's come over to the sideline. Let's catch our breath. Let's make sure we get the play that we want on second and eight here. And then they go down the other end, and they execute it beautifully for a touchdown. That's the first rushing touchdown of the year for McCaleb. And it's a big one here, one play into the fourth quarter. Got the stadium rocking too. Fans back in the chase here. Florida in the second half, only two first downs and only 21 yards of offense. And they're going to have to find some offense now. Just under 15 minutes to play. And Rainey trying to catch it over his shoulder. will have to down it in the end zone. So now Florida still a one possession game. But they're eight down. Well, and then you also now wonder, what does Charlie Weiss and Will Muschamp do? Because Jacoby Brissett was not all that effective in the first half. Jeff Driscoll has not been all that effective throwing the football in the second half. And Florida trying to avoid the third straight loss. So you go with Trey Burton, I guess, instead. You, you keep both the freshmen on the sideline, and you go back to the one part of your offense that moved the ball most consistently. That was Burton with the threat of the option playing quarterback. Burton, the sophomore, at the controls and the gun here. Gives it off. Gillisley. Nice run. Anyway, made the stop. Six yard pickup, second down and four. As you look behind Trey Burton. Third guy to take snaps tonight. Actually, the second. But three guys had for Florida tonight at the quarterback position. Gillisley again, and he's got first down. See, now, what you lose in maybe the ability to throw the football with the more talented Brissett or Driscoll throwing it, you gain with the threat of the option. And what the option does and the threat of the quarterback run with Burton is it forces this Auburn defense to play a little bit more basic, a little bit more vanilla, because of the option, because defending the option is assignment football. You got to make sure you account for the back, for the quarterback, and for the pitch man. We saw the first four games, the last two, and tonight only 136 total yards so far for Florida. Comes a blitz. Burton's going to keep it. And Lemonier will track him down. Along with Angelo Blackson. Now this is the safety. He's going to try to drop down in here late, get an extra defender. Again, when the quarterback runs, you gain an extra blocker. Gillisley was out there leading. Burton thought he saw a crease to cut it back in. Only picked up a couple yards. Second down at seven. As we approach 13 minutes remaining in the game, Gators trail by a touchdown and a two-point conversion. And here's... A flag fly in. Yep. Auburn got a nice stop, and it looks like it might be a holding on Florida. And I say if you're Gene Chizik, you go ahead and back them up. Even though you got a good stop on second down, I'd back them up behind the chains here and make it second and very long. Alapio was close to the play. I don't know if he's the guilty party. Personal foul, face mask. Oh, oh the other way again. That's twice. <laughs> It's twice the record, 98. It's thrown. Is 15 yards from the previous spot. Carries an automatic first down. That is two times that that's happened, where it's thrown in the area of offensive holding. It ends up being a face mask. Was it Igwe? Wow. You heard, you could see, rather, uh, Gene Chizik saying, on who? 
Watch the end of the play on the right side of the screen. 98 gets good penetration. It wasn't 98. Well, I'm not sure who it was. No, I don't either. 94 is Igwe. He was in on the tackle. Briscoe at quarterback. Drops to throw. Going deep. Into coverage. Almost intercepted by Nico Thorpe. And again, Jordan Reed was the guy who was aiming it at, but it was beautifully played back there by the Auburn secondary. It's just not there. I mean, you don't throw late down the middle of the field with a deep safety. I mean, he's so lucky that that wasn't intercepted. You take a look. If it's there, great. Take a shot at it. If it's not there, you got to find a check down and dump it off and hope you get a positive game. And again, that's, that's the whole learning process for a young quarterback. Read your progressions. Take what the defense gives you. Second down and 10. 12 and a half to go. Florida needs a touchdown. Lemonier coming with pressure again. Driscoll throws the other way and completes it to Hammond. And that's a first down toss. That shows you the strength of Driscoll's arm. I mean, both of these young quarterbacks have great arms. That's a throw from the left hash to the right sideline. Very little air under this throw. This deep out, thrown with timing. A nice first down for the Gators. Frankie Hammond coming to the plate here a little bit tonight. Yep. Fourth catch. He'll go out and get a breather. Dunbar and Thompson, the wide outs at the 40 yard line. First and 10 Gators. Driscoll has a look at that wristband. Steps back into the shotgun. There's his numbers so far. He loads and fires too high this time. Intended for Dunbar, and we check in with Reese. All right, Brad Clemson still roaring back, trying to remain undefeated. Now down 38-27 at the Snake Pit of Bird Stadium in Maryland. How about Sammy Watkins, his second touchdown catch of the night, 38-35. They're just now going to the fourth quarter on ESPNU. That one far from over. This one, a one possession game, Florida in Auburn territory. With a second down and 10, eye backfield. I haven't seen a lot of that tonight with a quarterback under center. The throw is going to be out quickly to Thompson. Thompson trying to get a block out there from Dunbar. Yeah, another one hit. Yep. That was really a nice job by Thompson showing patience to wait to read the block of Quentin Dunbar. He hesitated a little bit to let Dunbar get a good seal on the block, and then he got hit late out of bounds. So for the second time on this possession, we're going to have a 15-yard penalty Two against killers. the Auburn defense. Two killer penalties. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 25. That penalty is 15 yards, added to the end of the run. First down. Darren Bates has had a heck of a game, but that is a bad penalty right there. Watch the block by Dunbar, and watch the little hesitation by Thompson just enough to gain a few extra yards and then the clear hit out of bounds by Darren Bates. Thompson was two yards at least out of yep. bounds. Florida on the march here in the fourth quarter. Both teams four and two. Both teams need this win. On the ground, raining with a power run for a little guy. I tell you, he, his toughness is impressive to me. I mean, the, you, you called it. He's not very big. 5'9", 175 pounds is his program listing. So he may not be that big, but he is not afraid to stick his nose in there and run in between the tackles. He's not just looking to get outside and run on the edge. Second and four. Same guy. Different result. Auburn's there to meet him. Loss on the play. Yeah, Igwe, number 94, did a nice job of getting penetration in the backfield that time and forcing the play to slow down. It forced it to bounce wide, and then he wasn't able to gain anything. Remember Jeff Demps on the sideline but not playing tonight, so the entire load in the ground game has been on Chris Rainey with the exception of Trey Burton running it a few times. There's Jeff, a world-class sprinter. I remember Urban Meyer said one time earlier this year on ESPN, there's the fastest guy in college football, and Chris Rainey just thinks he is. <laughs> and that's the option they don't have tonight, having both the speedsters in the same lineup. And they had to call timeout. They were late getting the play call in. 
And they had to waste a timeout here on this third down and eight. A huge third down when we come back. Biggest third down of the night is at hand. Florida trying to tie the game up or at least get a touchdown to close the gap. But they've got to get all the way to the 12-yard line right here. Rainey and Burton with Driscoll in the backfield. Driscoll flares it out in the flat. Burton wheels around, almost lost his footing, and he only got to the 15-yard line. Now does Florida go for it here on fourth down? Boy, I thought this was going to be a big-time play because Auburn brought pressure, and they faked to Rainey and slipped it out to Burton. I thought he was going to be able to run for a first down. They're going to go for it. They're going to go for it. Well, they got kicking issues. Right. And so it's a one-score game. So, you know. There's Sturgis. He's out for the night. That would have put Christie, the punter, in for a field goal. Who, who dropped one trying to punt earlier in the game. Fourth down for Florida. And now Auburn's going to take a timeout. It's a chess match, Freddie Nessler. <laughs> yes, it is. With 9.36 remaining in the ball game, we expected a tight game. And uh, we've got it right now. But Gene Chizik knows full well that this is the fourth down of the season. With yeah. both teams at four and two, and we're down the last nine minutes, you got to have this hold. Yeah. If you're Florida, you got to have the first down. Well, you got to have the first down. I mean, and I guess you're thinking if you're Will Muschamp, there's nine and a half minutes left. Your defense has played pretty well. Right. You know, so even if you don't make it, you're still only down one score. You still can kind of play field position here, but obviously your first goal is let's get the right play called here on fourth down to pick up the first down. And again, remember, because of their kicker being injured, it probably influenced yeah. what they wanted to do here in a big way. And it's not exactly like you want your punter out there just saying, oh, okay, let's try a field goal just because you're normally kicking the ball. <laughs> they didn't want to put him in that situation. So they need to get to the 12-yard line. This is the play of the game, and Ted Ruth is telling his defense that. Michael Dyer is just having fun on the sideline right now. And I would, I, you know, if I'm Jeff Driscoll now, I'm expecting pressure from Auburn. And I'm expecting them to come after me and try to put me in duress. And Jeff Driscoll is also a very good runner. If he gets a lane, he might be able to run for a first down here. The guy that's caused the most arrests tonight's been number 55, Lemonier. He's in his track stance right there as part of that front for the Tigers. Fourth and four, Florida. Driscoll fires, and it's over the arms of Deontay Thompson incomplete. Chris Davis was covered. Now the ball just sailed on Driscoll. He had single coverage. It would have been a first down. He threw the ball too high. Nine and a half to play. Can the Tigers hold on to their lead? ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love having you here. And in part by Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. Some good looking dunks from Midnight Madness last night. Wasn't really midnight, but last night's basketball season underway, or at least practice is underway officially for everybody today. Auburn leading here 14 to 6, nine and a half remaining in the ball game as Florida failed on a fourth and four. So the Tigers take over at the 16 yard line. Kyle Frazier, the freshman in a quarterback. Hudson Kirkland who's had a couple of big catches in motion. He'll lead the way, but it's going to be Frazier coming back the other way. Maybe he should have followed number 43. On Did get a couple yards on the keeper, though. Well, I'll, I want to go back to the fourth down play because Florida had what they want. Chris Davis, the defender, is going to jump inside at the last minute. That means the out route is there. And this is a throw that Driscoll needs to make. He's got the situation one on one. His receiver has the outside position. And he's not able to make the accurate throw. He makes that. It's a first down for the Gators, and they still have momentum on the drive. Now it's up to the Gator defense. With less than nine to go. McCaleb with a stiff arm. 
run. He's not going to get away from McCray. And a loss of a yard as we check in with Reese again. Wow. Todd, who threw one of the yeah. worst passes he's thrown all season, but now he's coming back with the undefeated Clemson Tigers. Well, you know, this Auburn team had Clemson down 21 to nothing That's in right. Clemson, mm -hmm. and Todd's Boyd brought him back. He really hasn't slowed down since. Mosley scans the field, fires deep in the middle, oh, almost intercepted by. Now, Jelani Jenkins. I know I sound like a broken record, but I've said it about all the quarterbacks tonight. You cannot throw the ball late, deep, deep, and in the middle. I mean, you got to do that early. He waits, he waits, he throws it late, and he's very fortunate that he wasn't able to get, that he wasn't intercepted. So now, not a lot of damage done by Florida not getting their fourth and four. They lose a little field position, but this guy can get it back for you in a hurry if he can field a punt from Clark cleanly. So far, hasn't been able to do that tonight. And might have a chance here. Rainey, and he dropped another one. I think he covered it. Let's see. Well, the, the Auburn fans are booing because they think there should have been a roughing the punter. Which did not happen. Solomon Patton, who has been very close all night going after punts, did make contact with the punter, Steve Clark, and nothing was called here. And then Rainey, this has been uh, it's been a bad deal for him tonight. He's gonna have punt return nightmares this Whoa. evening. Davis has been along with us all night. He'll join Dirk Hurst Street, Craig James for BCS Countdown Sunday night. They unveil the first BCS poll and analyze who the contenders and pretenders are. It's 8.15 tomorrow night and continuing on ESPNU at 9 Eastern tomorrow. The Todd Blackledge and Holly Rowe, Brad Nestler with you from Jordan-Hare Stadium where the Tigers holding on to a lead. Florida with the ball, their own 39-yard line. They need a touchdown. They fake the end around, and Driscoll's going to throw it back to the guy who faked it to Thompson. And Thompson only gets to the 39. Speaking of Reese Davis, what do you got, Reese? Brad, what I have is a Sports Center right now presented by Discover Card. South Carolina leads the SEC East, and they beat Mississippi State today. But on this carry by Bruce Ellington, you see number 21, Marcus Lattimore, suffered a knee sprain. He's going to be evaluated back in Columbia. Did not look good. Left the field on crutches and a, and a leg brace. Not only a great player, but a great kid, and I hope that's not serious for not just himself, but for the Carolina team. Second down and eight. Florida, the final seven minutes of the quarter. And that one battered down at the line. Nose Igwe got a big paw up there. And now, uh, Greeny's running with the ball. I don't know what that was about. Well, I mean, Rainey's reacting like it was a backward pass. I thought it was clearly a forward pass that was just batted down at the line of scrimmage. Trying to throw a flare route. It was forward pass, yeah. but the deflection made it go back. Right. Well, you know, good for Chris Rainey. Stay with the play until you yeah. hear a whistle or whatever. Uh, yeah, and they got to move this back to. The original. the original line of scrimmage for uh -huh. third down. Should be third and eight instead of third and 18, right? Uh, right around there, yeah. Previous play is under further review. Robert Rougeau is our replay official. Talked to him before the game, and they'll take a look at this. Looked clearly like it was just a ball that was going to be out in the flat, but Deflected backwards. I'll tell you what, a couple of these linemen for Auburn, Igwe and Lemonier, actually all those guys on the front for Ted Roof's defense really played hard tonight. Come up with some big plays. Yep. Well, Xavier Nixon, number 73, was in such a hurry to get out in front of this play that he let Igwe have too quick a path to the quarterback. And that, that ball shouldn't get tipped. Basically, Rainey was at the 35-yard line, and Driscoll was at about the 31 when he let go of the pass, so that was the path that the ball was supposed to head to. This is going to be just an incompletion, I think, when we come back uh, after the official review. 6-20. Video evidence shows 
that the pass was thrown forward and batted backwards by the defender. Therefore, it is an incomplete pass. The ball will be placed at the previous spot. Third down. That'll be at the, what, 41-yard line. Well, Florida three for 12 tonight on third downs. Auburn not much better at one for 11. So both of these teams have struggled mightily in third down situations. Ledge, they might not get any more opportunities pretty soon. Yep. That means the third down couldn't be much bigger than it is at the 620 mark. They need a touchdown and a two point conversion to tie this thing up. They have only. Two field goals to show for their efforts on offense tonight. I just keep thinking, uh, thought from the very beginning of the game, you know, when is Jordan Reed going to show up? He, he's a big target at 6'3, 240 pounds. A little bit bigger than most defensive backs or safeties that would cover him. And he just has, has not been much of a factor. They've aimed it at him a couple yeah. times, but uh, ill advised throws down the middle, as you said, deep and late. And then he had the one catch that was negated when he stepped out of bounds on his own before coming back in to make the catch. I just think you, you call something that's kind of a sticks route right here where you just get to the first down marker. Your routes take you to the 50 and then you just find the the, the, the open guy. I think they're just trying to reset the clock from the incompletion uh, would be my guess anyway. And Dunbar and Davis having a little chat. Well, the clock operator please reset the game clock to six minutes. 33 seconds. So attack on 13 more Thank seconds. A little shortly. Third down and eight. How many more times will Florida even be able to have their hands on the football? That's what makes this third down from their own 41 so important. Bates thinking about coming off the corner. Driscoll's back to throw and over the middle goes complete to Burton, but he slipped and he couldn't get to the first down. He's about a yard and a half shot. Wow. Tough decision now for Will. I, I, you know, if this pass was incomplete and it's fourth and eight, I think you got to punt the football and hope your defense can get one more stop. But now you're right up there close, fourth and short. The They're problem going. here is field position is still critical in this game as a one possession game. So if you don't make this, you give Auburn a short field and pretty much seal your chance of winning. You try to draw him offside and then change your mind and punt. Could be. Fourth and three. And the unfortunate thing about that sometimes when you try to do it to the defense, you do it to yourself. You know, Xavier Nixon has been bothered by some kind of, a, of, of an injury that's been bugging him. False start. 64 on the offense. Kyle Johnson in the previous spot. Fourth down. That was Kyle Coney that got called for the infraction. So now you definitely punt the football and you and you hope your defense can come through one more time. Uh, both those guys flinched. And I think you're right. I think it was Nixon more than Coney. Anyway, the first penalty against the Florida offense in this half. But it's costly because now they've got to kick it away. Christie, the punter. Knocks one down, gets a great roll, and I mean a really great roll. Yeah, that's what you want. You, you put it on your defense to keep them down there, keep playing field position, and give your offense one more shot. And my partner, Todd Blackley, was playing catch with Cody Parkey's little brother this morning in the parking lot of the hotel, and his numbers were better than all of these quarterbacks so far. Tonight, been another rough night for signal callers in the SEC. Rissat, who started the game, Driscoll, who's been in most of this half, Trotter, who started the game, and Mosley, who's been in this half for Auburn. But lo and behold, one for eight for Trey Burton. He's got the best completion percentage of the night. Well, right now, if you're Auburn, you're thinking, take care of the football, and let's get a first down. But let's take see. care of the football first. Let's see if Michael Dyer can grind out some yardage for us. Not very much on the first carry, although he's still got his feet moving. Got out to the five, maybe the six, before he's pushed back in his own end zone, and we check in with Reese Davis. 
Brad, want to put your finger on the prime time pulse. What in the world is going on in ESPN2? It's early, but Kansas has a touchdown. It's only 10-7. Oklahoma has the lead on ABC. Bank of America 500 at Charlotte. Kyle Busch is leading the race right now. They're under caution. On ESPNU, Matt Furstenberg just scored for the second time tonight, catching a tight end touchdown pass, 45-42. Maryland back on top of Clemson. That's a crazy one there. And the Terrapins home field. Here, Auburn on their home field, but in a hole at their own six-yard line. Frazier gives off to Dyer, and he's wrapped up again at the line of scrimmage. And again, Dominic Easley, who's had a big game, the goal number two. Well, Will Muschamp thought they, they, he felt like they matched up really well with their defensive front against this Auburn offensive line. And, and they've done their job. Remember, Auburn's got a true freshman center, too, which doesn't yep. help the cause. Not that he's not a good player, but you'd like to have maybe a fifth-year senior play in that spot. And that's Reese Dismukes, the freshman. That's a tough position to play as a freshman in this league or any league for that matter. Even though Auburn likes to run tempo, they want to eat clock here. So they're taking as much time as they can between snaps. Mosley gives off to Dyer. And again, Michael, nothing there. So they're using the clock, but they're not gaining any yards. And they're going to have to punt. Their punter's going to have to be standing in his own end zone to punt the football. But remember, it's been an adventure all night long on the other end. Oh, boy. Trying to field punts, I'm talking about. And with that, Chris Rainey's not even back yeah. there. Robert Clark is. I, I think it's a good move because Rainey has just not looked comfortable. Now, the question is, is Rainey in as a rusher? Because he's a great punt blocker as well. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's squatting down right now so as not to be seen. School record and <laughs> SEC record of five block punts in his career. As you look behind Clark, Clark gets a kick away. Clark on the other end with the fair catch, and he dropped Are you it. Kidding me. Wow, Auburn's got it. Well, you can't you advance, can't advance but they've got it again. How many snafus on punt returns can you handle in one game? Much less a whole season, for that matter, has happened tonight to Florida. <laughs> oh, my. I mean, you did everything right. You punt the football. Your defense holds. You put somebody else back there to catch the ball. You're just going to fair catch it. During the play, the kick was muffed by the receiving team, recovered by Auburn. By rule, he cannot advance the kick. The ball is given to Auburn at the spot of recovery. First down. And now they're three minutes away from yeah. the win. And the field position has completely changed. I mean, you, you, you know, you say offense, defense, special teams, all three equally important, and the special teams have killed Florida tonight. And remember, LSU scored or would have scored a touchdown on a fake punt last week that had Will Muschamp up in arms about his special teams play. Yep. I got a feeling he's going to blow a gasket tonight again. Straight ahead, Dyer. And now all they have to do is continue well, to chew the clock. Florida's only got two timeouts. And they got to use them. See, now they've already used one timeout. See, the last defensive possession, because they had them backed up so deep, they didn't have to use any timeouts. They were going to have plenty of time timeout. for their offense. Now they got to burn them. Florida. Down to one. Second time out of the half. This will be a 30 second time Will out. Will Muschamp trying to keep his troops in it, but the special teams' problems tonight might have killed their chances of winning a game on the road or at least tying it up. Let's take a look at our All-State good hands play. We know there's been some bad hands plays for Florida on punt returns, but this one on a free play. Darren Trotter going up top, finding D'Angelo Benton for the touchdown. Our first of the night and the only one of the night for a long time before Ontario McCaleb scored in this half to make it 14 to 6. Well, you know, we said early on in the broadcast that neither one of these teams was playing at a high enough level offensively to overcome turnovers. They had to take care of the football. And tonight, Auburn has not had a turnover, and Florida has had three. Now, two of them were special teams turnovers. One was the interception by Brissett, but that's too many to, to win when you are playing the way you're playing. 
Kyle Frazier at quarterback. I don't know if that was a broken play, but he's going to run with it, and he's going to do well running with it. Well, did you see him cover up the football, too? Very smart for the young guy. He got in the open field, and he took care of the football because at this point he realizes the only thing that can hurt our chances to win is if they get the ball and strip it from us. So watch him covered up with both arms at the end of the play as he's going to the ground. And all the way down to the 25 where it's first down and Mosley comes back in. Michael Dyer time here, boy. I yep. would give it to five every time. Even if they don't gain much, they they'll don't need use to Florida. No, they'll use make Florida use that one time out. Fake the sweep straight ahead with five. And he keeps those legs churning for about four yards. Mm -hmm. you know, you and don't Florida's need... going to take its last time out. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, you don't need any points Florida. because even if Florida would happen to figure out a way to score a touchdown, they still have to get a, a two-point conversion also right. to put the game in overtime. So, I mean, you are in perfect position to do nothing right now except hand the ball off to Michael Dyer. And what will be in the minds of Florida fans for at least a week, the month punts. That one, did he get enough room? Doesn't matter. Fair catch. Barely made that one. There. That led to an Auburn touchdown. Another one he drops. They put Robert Clark back, and he did the same thing. Wow. They will not want to see a ball high on the lights again for a long time. Gene Chizik knows that uh, a first down here and things are looking pretty rosy. They got second and a long six coming up, but if they get to the 15 yard line, Florida's not going to have a way to stop it anymore. And it would be a three game losing streak. For the Gators, much like a year ago, but for a first-year head coach, as Will Muschamp is, it would be the first time since the Charlie Pell days that Florida would have lost three in a row under a first-year head coach. Well, we showed you that graphic earlier. Last year, it started with a loss to Alabama, then a loss to LSU, then the third loss last year was at home against Mississippi State, 10 to 7. And uh, this year, the, that third game in the stretch is here on the Plains at Auburn. The third down here, and Frazier's going to come back in, and Mosley will go out. The last time Frazier touched it, he faked it to Dyer and went 18 yards on his own. For a first down. If he gets one here, it could be lights out for the Gators. He will run it, but he will only get about a yard. See, I don't think you line up and try a field goal here either because you run the risk of it getting blocked. I think you let the clock run down and you and you run one more play on fourth down and make Florida go the long field. Remember, Parkey has missed right and missed left yeah. tonight. No, you don't even mess with a field goal because, again, Florida has to score and convert a two-point. And they'd have to do it with a freshman quarterback no matter who's out there. And no timeouts. Right. Kind of tough to do. They can run the clock down to around 40, 42 seconds maybe, 43, somewhere in there. Gene Chizik. All right, we got time. With a timeout with 46 seconds. Remember, Parkey, that one was wide to the right from 42. A 45 yarder was wide to the left. And we'll see whether or not they're going to put him out there. He's warming up. Yep. I mean, if he hits this one, it's lights out. Well, anyway. Yeah, if he makes it, it's a two score game, and, and then it, it essentially is over you right. know, for Florida. I don't know. I mean, he's missed a couple. I just think you run the risk of a potential block and something changing field position and changing the momentum of the game dramatically here in the last minute. But I do understand trying to get a two score lead. And we've seen that special teams tonight have been anything but special really on both sides of the ball. I'm kind of with Todd. I, I don't think you can go, you know, 80 yards with no timeouts with a freshman quarterback in the SEC on the road. They, they haven't made a touchdown yet tonight right they got two field goals for six points that's all I'm saying I, that's why I don't but we'll see what happens here 
Like you said, the last thing that you want to happen is to hear a double thud here. Boom, boom, meaning block kick. It takes everybody to do their job. Ryan White is the holder. Josh Harris will snap it. And they're going to give Cody Parkey another crack at it. And number 36 will try from 37 to basically ice the football game, or you would certainly think so. The guys that I would pay attention to if I'm up front blocking for Auburn would be number two and number six. Jay Howard and Dominique Easley are going to line up right next to each other. Those guys are powerful and quick off the ball. We'll try to get inside push here on the field goal rush. And then the guy that you just saw on your screen, number one, is standing about yeah. six yards away from everybody else because he's going to be flying off the corner. And that's Chris Rainey. Wouldn't it be ironic if Chris Rainey, who's had so many snafus on special teams, came up with a big one here on the Auburn kicker? So 46 seconds remaining in an eight-point game. And the officials still having a conference over there at the Auburn sideline. Maybe we'll find out what they're talking about. With the game clock operator, please reset the game clock. 41 seconds. And we said we thought it was going to be around 42 seconds. It's 46, so we're going to lose seconds. five more here. And if this kick Thank goes you. through, that makes it even tougher. If it doesn't, it's still tougher on Florida. Well, Cody came into the game tonight seven out of eight. But you saw his misses. And you can go from being a little bit of a goat as a field goal kicker to a big man on campus if you knock this baby in. Parkey from 37. And they've got a flag down. Well, the first move was by Jay Howard, number six. But there was movement right after that by the offensive line of Auburn. So were they drawn off by the movement of Howard? And does it go against Florida or does it go against Auburn? If it's Florida, it might be a first down. False start. Offense. Oh, okay. 98. <laughs> Five yards from the previous spot. Fourth down. Uh-oh. Now you're talking about the same distance, basically, that he missed from earlier. Yeah, it's Angelo Blackson, and he's right in here. And again, he's lined up right across from both Easley and Howard. And those are the guys that are going to try to get the push on the middle of that blocking front. So Parkey is missed from this distance tonight. They're making it hard on number 36. But they'll give him a shot. Kick on the way, and this time he got it when he needed to the most. Forty-two yard field goal by Parkey after missing a couple from basically the same range. And Coach Chiswick says, you went right, you went left, yep. you went down the middle. You know what I remember that happened on the sideline that was really pretty cool is when he missed the second one, the guys on the sideline, Michael Dyer, Phil Lutz and Kirkin, were over there kind of joking with them, smacking them on the head, saying, hey, we still believe in you. And when they needed it the most, Parkey was true. Let's check in with Reese. It's funny, sometimes we all think alike. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't talked to Reese about this, but yeah. you and I, ever since we had the Clemson-Florida State right. game on Sammy Watkins, we all had that Sammy, and I mean that, babe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, if you did that to Sammy Watkins, he probably would have no idea No, he doesn't know who about. Sammy Davis Jr. is. <laughs> <laughs> the kick, Rainey, is going to bring it out from five yards deep. And Chris Rainey, nice return. Couldn't quite break the last couple of tackles, however. Sunday NFL countdown tomorrow, three hours, start at 10 o'clock. Chris Berman and the gang have all the latest updates around the league right up until kickoff. Sunday NFL countdown presented by IBM, ESPN tomorrow morning.
10 a.m. Eastern time. Another big weekend of NFL football leading up to the Dolphins and the Jets on Monday night with Mike and Jaws and John. Now Florida only 62 yards of total offense in the second half. And their struggles continue offensively. They need a quick strike. And they need an onside kick. Driscoll completes it. Not to Thompson who steps out of bounds. We talked about this being a crossroads game sort of venture tonight. And, uh, and now this is going to look better for Auburn if this holds up. They're going to be 5-2. and two. They'll be 3-1 and one in the conference. And remember, LSU and Alabama still have to play each other, and they still get those guys. So somebody's going to lose between the Tigers and Alabama on November 5th. So anything can happen. I don't know that they're in that category, but they're going to feel better about themselves here in about 15 seconds, that's for sure. Rainey, broken tackle, cuts it to the outside, got out of bounds at the 30, stopped on the clock with 12 seconds to go. You know, the other team on this SEC West that you can't go to sleep on is Arkansas, the team that beat Auburn last week. They're sitting there at 5-1 and one after one loss to Alabama, but they still play LSU down the road as well. So uh, still a lot can happen in the SEC West. Clemson just scored another touchdown, and now they've got an 11-point lead on Maryland. That one's still about four minutes to play. Here we're down to a couple of snaps. Briscoe steps up, fires deep in the middle, in and out of the hands of uh, Jordan Reed. Yeah. Jordan Reed was, he had already figured out how he was going to spin back to the inside and get in the end zone, and he forgot to do one thing, and that was secure the catch. He was already turning towards the end zone. That was the play they needed had he been able to wheel around and score, and you got a real outside shot with... Well, now there's only four seconds. There is no shot left. But had he scored, we would have had an onside kick up coming. As it is, we're down to one play. Driscoll, look out from Lemonier from behind. That pretty much tells the story of the night. And Auburn is one of them again. A disappointing three-game slide for first-year head coach Will Muschamp. As Florida loses 17 to 6. So five and two and three and one in conference play for the defending national champions. Needed to gut out a win any way they could get it, and they were able to do just that tonight. Two guys whose careers followed very similar paths. Will Muschamp, Gene Chizik shake hands at midfield, and Coach Chizik's with Holly. Well, Coach, what factors did you consider at halftime to make a change with the quarterback? Well, uh, you know, we just thought it was time. You know, we felt like we knew it was time, and. And I'm just blessed to, to be around guys that make good decisions and uh, be blessed to be around a, a bunch of fans like this. And, man, God's just been good to us. But bottom line is, is that we made the change and we thought we had to make the change. Guys played really hard all day, and I couldn't be more proud of this football team. They are fighters, and they're scrappers down to the end. The Thanks, Coach. Cool. Thank you. After a disappointing loss on the road, they come home to home cooking at the Plains, and they win it 17-6. to six. Final score, Auburn goes 5-2 and 3-1 and and in conference play. Cut up. Arizona State and Oregon is following our game. For Ty Blackley, Tyler Rowe, our entire ESPN crew, Brad Nessler saying so long from Auburn, Alabama.